Yeah. Now it is going. You want to send me a link? I can put it up on my Facebook. No, no, it's feed. okay now. It's 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 working now. Finally, finally done. Done done. So we can also link it to our Facebook timeline, na? I I'll, I'll share. I'll share in the way. Oh, ye YouTube se aa gaya. Maaz se kar do. so um hello everybody um, sorry for this uh, small glitch somehow our zoom and uh, youtube was uh, refusing to connect for whatever reason i just didn't have to do anything i had to just refresh it couple of times and then it reconnected on its own so i think the over traffic which is happening because of um, everybody is trying to be online and trying to uh, stream these live services from zoom to youtube so anyways so welcome to another episode of extra bites and uh, um, today we have a wonderful speaker with us um, um, who is none other than mr akash das and uh, Yeah, you know, we'll be going um, live in chat with him um, with uh, two wonderful photographers, um, uh, Dinesh Khanna ji and uh, uh, Samar Jodha ji, and it will be uh, moderated by uh, Samar sir. So, without wasting any of your further time, we've already wasted, I think, ten minutes, ten fifteen minutes. So, uh, over to Samar sir, um, and you can take it uh, forward from here. Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh, I'm the guy in charge. Okay. Uh, well, you know, let's not waste time on uh, what I have to say. Uh, I think between uh, you know myself and Dinesh, uh, you know, uh, we have a very amazing uh, association and friendship with Akash. We've seen him through his very early years of advertising, and uh, what he does today is a very, very long way. He's done so many, many different kind of, I would say, uh, diversity in photography, whether it's a controlled environment or product photography or working with wildlife, which is totally unpredictable, including some seriously dangerous situations when you look at his work and you wonder how he's managed to do it. So, uh, you know, uh, welcome to the to the show, Akash. Uh, let's start from you speaking. Let's start with where it started and uh, whatever the time format is accordingly. Let's move to. Uh, you know, as as you as as you went forward with this uh, passion of yours, Dinesh, do you have anything to add to this? Uh, one sec, where did I go? Oops. Uh, hi, Akash. Welcome, and hi. thanks so much, Jesse, for you know this platform and inviting all of us uh, day after day. The very interesting talks. Uh, Akash, should I tell the secret? We were discussing yesterday the fact that we've known each other for 40 years. Wow! Absolutely. Our professional association goes back 40 years, so now you can imagine that he is about 94 years old and I'm 97. <laughs> so that's the kind of ages we have. <laughs> but at least when you add up our ages, then probably that's what it adds up to. Uh, but yeah, Akash and I used to work together in Clarion in uh, 1979 or 1980. It was, you know. Wow! And. Uh, And 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 I find that really interesting. The fact that I, I love people who've been in advertising and who then you know migrated, or really I would say evolved is the word to photography or to creative arts. Uh, and Akash has you know carried forward that with such great aplomb. His, his aesthetic sense, his sense of design, uh, you know, his his graphic way of looking at things, which is where I think he really scores. Even when he you know his main love today is wildlife, as far as personal work is concerned. but the eye and the heart with which he sees that is so special that you know it sets him apart from other wildlife photographers uh, and i'm not just a carry on which is not to say that anyone is you know lesser or worser or whatever it is but he has a very distinctive style and that shows through in his photography whether it's fashion whether it's wildlife whether it's he's working on commercial assignment which he does a lot of also so akash pleasure being here and looking forward to listening to you more talking about a journey your inspirations and your work over to you sir yeah thank you thank you all the listeners who have joined this uh, and thanks to jessy thanks to dinesh and thanks to uh, summer both of them i know for many many years and both of them are 
apart from very very highly professional they are also very very kind and good human being so that is where we connect actually there has to be some connect with each other you know so i'm really glad that you know all of you are here so uh, what i'll do is i'll uh, uh, you know instead of talking i'll just start showing my pictures and i'll start narrating what i think and what is uh, actually how i look at things so uh now uh, you guys can see it hello not no, not yet probably oh, well how why is that so because this is my uh uh what you call uh, i have to again share have you got a pdf again. open ah uh, i my uh, yeah pdf is open but pdf is taking uh you know it says says files I, i think i have to correct the files Uh, you have to select it and click on it and then choose and the bottom it will say share screen uh, that that's what i've already clicked so then you will get some so options so you... all your open files will be there then acha one second let me uh... now my uh, this thing pdf is open but what i am doing is share screen yes i have done that then uh, it shows my clear soft one drive google drive box but it so does not show your share screen. optimize screen share video clip share is not showing okay i go to more uh, if you are Akash, have you opened the PDF? Yeah, PDF okay, is up. open, On but what is happening when I open? You can't see it, you know. So my PDF is already open. So when you click And on share screen, then the window which opens doesn't see, it show various I'm, open see, files? See, when I'm uh, uh, clicking on uh, you know share screen, it's showing Microsoft OneDrive, Google Drive box. Okay. Now, which do I, uh, which one do I click? No, uh, share computer where sound. Where is your file? PDF. File is on my desktop only. PDF is on my desktop only. No, but that yeah. has to be on the uh, uh, on the computer on which you are playing Zoom. So, with from where you are logged in. Yeah, I logged in from the link you have sent. Yeah, but uh, it's on the. Where are you? Uh, in which computer are you pressing share screen? uh computer is my imac which is 27 imac on the same uh, on the same thing your pdf is open on the same yeah, desktop the, yeah 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 but when i uh, open my pdf it's uh, you guys can't see it i believe no no but it has to be on the same computer yeah it's same computer only i'm using one computer only no no but Uh, okay do one thing uh same desktop you mean you have you have double click the pdf yeah yeah it's open okay it is open okay, okay. now you have also done the uh, share screen right yeah yeah absolutely share okay, screen now, i have done now that's why i'm telling go to go to uh, on the top you do you see stop sharing uh stop sharing no no eric says stop sharing yeah. that means you've not yet started sharing so so once you uh, uh, dinesh sir you received the uh, file i have i think aap download karo jara usko me i have the file so akash will have to tell me what he wants me to do uh, one extra byte uh, you open that double click on that okay i've got it click on the first picture So now I need to once again let me get on to share screen first, na? Huh? Actually, the screen is not being shared. Thirty-two, uh, uh, and uh, yeah. Ah, there we are. Excellent. Can you see it? Yeah, you can yeah. see. Yeah, it's from my side, right? Yeah. Well, then that's from my screen right now. So you'll have to tell me what to do with it. 
Achha, now, okay, it's come from, now you, I talk about this particular picture. This, uh, uh, I mean, many people have seen this picture already, black and white, which uh, actually went uh, to uh, Time Magazine has published this, National Geographic has published this, and also it went for Incredible India. Now, in a nutshell, this is my basic, uh, uh, what you call, uh, uh, way of looking at wildlife. Now, I when I see a wildlife, uh, I don't go straight uh, in close up of the wildlife. What I do, I create an environment. I mean, the environment is already there, but my wildlife, my subject, maybe only 10% of that whole screen, but yet he's very powerful and he's telling a story. Now, over here, you what you would see is is the jungle and deep sal forest and this is a long path now the tiger has to go a long way and no if nobody comes to the tiger's rescue there's always a god, god's torch god's light falling on it now to narrate this you know what i always say uh, you on your honeymoon you go to hawaii for example you know and uh, you come back from your honeymoon pictures are all close-ups. So what is the fun? So when you are in Hawaii, take that environment into consideration and be part of that environment. Then only your picture will talk a tell a story. So that is the way I look at it. And then uh, I try to compose it. Basically what I feel is uh, composition, a great subject cannot make a a great photograph, a, a normal photograph, a normal subject can make a great photograph if it is actually composed well. So I'm not saying great subject cannot be a great photograph. Great subject with a great composition will be a greater photograph. So always I remember this thing that whenever I have to, you know, uh, take a picture, then millionth of a second, thousandth of a second, two thousandth of a second, I have to decide what is the environment I'm going to capture with my subject so that I can tell a story without narrating anything. So uh, Dinesh, you can go to the second one. You can just uh, push the, yeah. Now, if you see this picture, uh, just look at the skin uh, texture of the uh, this mammoth elephant. Now, if you look closely, you'll find the bark of the trees and the uh, tree, all the uh, leaves of the trees and light filtering through, they all actually have got similar kind of pattern. So I look for these things when I'm shooting. I actually look for not only the subject, subject is, is very important, but where is the environment? I don't want to go absolute close. So therefore, what I do is I, I actually take that environment into consideration and make my pictures because when you are doing photography, you always have to remember when you're clicking, you have to remember that at the end of the day, what are you going to do with that picture? So that is very, very important for me. So uh, you, uh, Dinesh, you can go to the next one. Now look at this one. This one is again, like uh, as, as well, many people ask me that, you know, you do uh, wildlife photography, wildlife, the main thing you need over there is patience. I would say that patience is actually misunderstood and it is misutilized. How I'll tell you, when you're waiting in the airport for a plane to come to take you from here to say Bombay, you're waiting for two hours, you, you know you have to wait. It is not patience working. It is your, you are actually waiting. That is, a, that, that is not patience you're utilizing. So you are doing this, that, chatting and all that during that time. But when you are actually doing wildlife, what is patience? Patience is actually the, the you know, inner senses open up and listen to the jungle, listen to the nature, and also try to understand what is going to happen next. So, and whether it is, it is, uh, 50, 50, 60 degrees centigrade, or it is minus five, or it is too many, uh, what you call mosquito bites, doesn't matter. 
you don't move around too much you don't make any sound that is what is called patience because your patience is utilized like meditation when you're meditating you're thinking about one thing so therefore you get some inspiration over here when you start meditating in the jungle i'm not saying meditating means like close your eyes i'm just you know drawing a parallel basically so you when you're doing keep your eyes your ears open and you start meditating you just you start thinking you start thinking this is a, a vacant canvas in front of me what if a tiger comes in what if a elephant comes in what if a bird comes in you know so you start imagining like that and once you start imagining like that you will find that slowly and slowly thing starts happening in front of you so here actually it is very unusual that there are three uh, about year old uh, kids are running generally you find one with the mother or with the aunt here three of them so it is not that my patients over here i saw these uh, herd of elephant they were actually grazing around and slowly they are moving so i knew something is going to happen so i didn't rush for some call was happening all the jeeps went there because of some tiger call was happening but i didn't leave that spot i kept on waiting i knew something is going to happen and look what has happened it's a, i i really love this picture and then at that time i have to think what exposure to give because i didn't want the background to sh have sharpness in it because that would have killed this rhythmic dance of the little elephants the mother is only helping it so look at that background which looks like cloud which is dancing cloud again you know so uh, so you have to in the split of moment actually you have to think and when you wait with your thought process with your eyes and ears open that is called in real terms is called patience uh, dinesh next one wow yeah now this one actually uh, i've shot in bera uh, i don't know whether you guys know it is in rajasthan it's uh, uh, near lundana and uh, about say uh, 10 kilometers away from lundana is uh, what you call 100 kilometers uh, before uh, udaipur it's a very difficult place to find and uh, and uh, when i thought i'm going to the jungle to sleepard and i thought actually i'm going to a green lush jungle you know uh, and i'll see leopard there but when i landed up it was like a jungle it is called a jungle uh, forest but it's all rocky forest it's only rocks there hard rock so uh, i was lucky there the first uh, evening i went there and i found this two uh, leopard one is called duke and one is called princess uh, both of them are roaming around freely and there are a couple of uh, caves over there they used to live in that cave and then move around over there but what again like you know look at the texture of the rock and look at the texture of the leopard i mean it resembles it re they resemble each other so these are the nuances i look for when i am doing wildlife photography that is not only uh, i am not only capturing a particular uh, species i am not a uh, documentary photographer you know when you are doing documentation whichever way then it's very important for you to document that particular species in in its full form but i am not documentary photographer i am a, a wildlife art wildlife photographer i care for the environment you know so without the environment the uh, the species the elephant or the tiger or the leopard or the bird is nothing and without the bird or the leopard uh, the environment is nothing so both are actually uh, uh, what you call uh, they they actually um, uh, complement each other you know so it is very important for me let on also i'll discuss that how close up i do also close up but what is the difference between the two where one tells a story and the other one doesn't tell a story you know but short story okay uh, uh, dinesh thank you sir for, uh, uh, dinesh can it again can Sorry. we ask can we ask in between or should we wait uh, dinesh, uh, samar uh, what do you say uh, no i mean i'm personally very happy to hear you as you are walking us through every frame yeah, so uh, i don't know if people have uh, jaise uh, especially young photographers might have questions on any technicalities uh, i have no idea 
No, no, but uh, should I wait for his presentation to end, then ask, or, or in between we can interrupt? No, I think let's flow with it. It's a beautiful story how he. Yeah, I think we can go with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I'll, I'll actually answer most of the questions. Then, yeah. if you have any questions further, you can. You're most welcome to ask. Perfect, sir. perfect, perfect. Okay, this actually is a is a just a, a scenic beauty for me. You know, I was lucky to get them both early morning sunrise and both of them coming down. But here, I had to use a technical, uh, you know, my technical skill a little bit because here they were totally, you know, silhouette. They were dark. The the dark rocks were absolutely black. So uh, what I did was I, uh, you know, um, uh, later on, I just retrieved the shadow part of it and a little bit of on, on uh, Lightroom. I really touched up and brought out a little bit of uh, uh, exposure on the on the leopards and then when I actually uh, uh, reduce the shadow uh, depth then automatically you could see the highlight of the of the rock so that is the technical part you know it's very important that uh, as I say uh, wildlife photography by general it is actually an art it is not a science but you you need the science also along with it because technology being in going higher and higher and, and different kind of techno technology coming in. If your tool, you don't know how to handle it, you will not be able to make a great picture. Then you will be like, it will be use, useless for you. So left side of your brain, which is actually uh, the, uh, the creative part, that is that you have to sharpen all the time if you are a photographer, you are, if you are a creative photographer. So that is what actually makes a picture. Now the right hand side is to make that picture, it helps you, the technical part, the science of it, it helps you, how can I capture, this is what I want, how can I capture it, but for that, you don't have to do, uh, you know, research for five years, only, you know, couple of videos or a book, if you read, you will know what is exposure, everything is light and shade, everything is exposure and composition, so therefore, if you can compose, Exposure, you will know, you have to know very little. You have to know the shutter speed, the aperture, how much to open, how much to close, what is the sh shutter speed. For example, when I'm doing wildlife, I mostly keep my shutter speed at thousandth of a second. I don't keep it lower than that. Even if I'm doing like something, a static subject, I never know what time, uh, where the blood, uh, the, the bird will fly or the, or the elephant will run or the or the leopard will come in. So I keep it constant thousandth of a second. So if I'm using thousandth of a second, now I have to decide how much of background I need. If I don't need much background, then I open aperture. But if I need background, I go 5.6, f8, f11, depending upon what lens I'm using. If I'm using wide angle lens, then I don't have to bother. I even at f4 or 2.8, I can get a sharp picture you know, uh, throughout. So these are the technical part you have to know. These are very little. Anybody can learn this, you know. Any photographer will know that the kind of work you're doing, what kind of exposure you should keep. So when I need, like I, if I think that I need foreground, background, then I close the shutter. I don't shoot at 2.8 or F4, 5.6. I don't go below uh, what you call F8. So I make sure, then I decide, Okay, now thousandth of a second, F8. So what should be the ISO? Because camera needs an ISO because without which it will not click. It will not give you a picture. It will become a dark picture, over, over picture or under picture. So therefore, but then I try to find out what is the best kind of uh, ISO I can use. Whether 400 is okay with me or 600 or 800. I'll tell you, for a good picture, I push it up to 3200, 6400. I don't give a damn because for me, that subject is most important than my exposure. So therefore, if I can capture the subject well, that is good enough for me. Now, little bit of over under, I don't mind. Even if it slightly goes under, I don't mind doing that because the subject and the, the location, that is important for me. Uh, then Dinesh.
Yeah, okay, it is from the same series. From three days I was there. Now again, the rock, the lighting, the uh, what you call, uh, what are they playing? Generally you see uh, a leopard generally, you know, looking at you or uh, sitting on a tree or walking on the greenery. Generally you have seen, at least I have seen uh, leopard like that. I've never seen leopard like in rock. They are doing rock climbing. They're jumping from one rock to the other. You're going in and you know, they are big, uh, what you call animals. And they're narrow, say about uh, eight, eight uh, inches, 12 inches narrow, those holes, they're going in. I mean, I don't know how they are doing it. Later on, after, uh, you know, they left, next day morning, I went there, I shot again. And then I climbed the rock. And they were already there inside somewhere. But I wanted to check. I found out that for me to go in, my I'm not a very big build, but I couldn't go in. But these guys were going in and out. That means look at the flexibility. So as I always say that when you are shooting a wildlife photography, uh, you actually have to know your subject. You have to do a little bit of study, their character, what do they do? You should not do anything which is dangerous. You should always know where to stop, you know? So uh, if you do a, your, a little bit of your study uh, about the subject, then you'll enjoy the photography much, much more. Dinesh? Okay, now this one, as uh, we always actually, uh, when you go to the jungle, uh, somehow everybody's priority is tiger. And uh, everybody runs around to get a tiger, you know. So uh, if they think that if they see a tiger or shoot a tiger, then their day is made. Even if sh they shoot brilliant pictures of other animals, they think, okay, it's okay. But the moment they see a tiger, even if they see uh, the, the tail of the tiger, there's a fantastic man. I had a fantastic day. Okay. This is how I, my experience is. I see people doing that. I mean, uh, there's no offense meant or anything, but that is where the general people behavior. Now, this one, early morning, it was a misty day again, winter morning. As we are, you know, uh, driving through the jungle, there are tall grasses all around and uh, there's no sign of any animal that day. Uh, I mean, I couldn't even hear a bird, especially this side, other side of the Ganga. So, uh, but we are, we are, we stopped our Jeep and we are just listening that if there is any kind of sound or any kind of, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, what you call nuances we can get of the, any, any animal being around. But uh, while doing that, I was really enjoying the scene. The, this, uh, you know, bent tree, it's beautiful and little bit of wind, it was blowing and the grass was also blowing and the background, special layers of, you know, browns and greens and sap greens and yellow ochre and crow yellow and all those colors, I was really enjoying it. But suddenly, without any call, found from the, from the left, left and side of the grass, a little head popped out. So our eyes and ears, you know, stood up and you know, like we're waiting for this. And slowly the tiger was taking one step at a time. Slowly it started crossing and came in front. And I had a 800 mm with 1.4 X, but I kept it aside. I took up a much smaller lens because I thought that I will only get couple of two, five, four, five frames. I rather utilize what is this, uh, you know, background, uh, the nature I was admiring all this time. And when the tiger comes, I forget about it and go close up with my 800 mm to the face of the tiger. I thought that will be injustice, done injustice to the, to the nature. So I pulled back, I took a smaller lens and I captured the entire, uh, you know, uh, uh, what you call a scenario. Instead of going with my motorway, like, you know, uh, like a machine gun. I didn't do that. I made each and every frame and I got only three or four frames. Then after that, the tiger actually went behind the, uh, 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 what you call, uh, the tall grass. Now, uh, Dinesh, if you can go on to the next uh, slide, please. 
Can I just say one thing here? Yeah, yeah, I think this is such a brilliant photograph. You know, it's just making me look at every corner. It's almost that it's compelling me to search. Yeah. And that it's almost like I can get the feeling you had while you were there, you know, in the wild and how, you know, you were searching for something, you know. It's yeah. so, so beautiful. Yeah. You. you know, I'd like to also add, you know, uh, when you say this thing about... Uh, you are not a wildlife photographer, but you work in art space is what you do, how you work on your, I mean, it is really, I mean, amazing. You know, each time I see your work and you feel like you are part of that process rather than typically wildlife photography is something you look through a box or a TV or a picture. Here, you really feel like you're standing in the middle of it. And I think that's really, really a brilliant way of how you capture, you make, uh, you know, your audience feel that, you know. Thank you. Thank you. I said, now to come to this, this is totally opposite what I've shown you, told you all this along. Okay, it's totally opposite. Now, just imagine this picture up in your wall, this massive picture, maybe, you know, um, uh, say about 40 by 40. You put it up and you will see that this picture is overpowering your whole house, not only your room, it's overpowering you. It's so, it's, it's psychedelic. If you keep looking at it, you get an illusion, actually. You know, look at this picture. This and look into the eyes, really, my God. Yeah. Yeah. So this situation. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. This is this is so and kind of intimidating kind of an image. Yeah, yeah. So I actually, I was, you know, we are uh, we got a hint of a tiger being around, and we I saw uh, from my jeep that tiger was moving around. It's a really thick bush and all that. Lantana bush and all that, so couldn't figure out, you know. Suddenly, I see that next to my jeep, I mean, it's about uh, um, six or seven feet away. The, the tiger is sitting there and staring at me like this. So, and it was like, suddenly it happened. So, uh, when did that happen? Then I had uh, uh, 7200 with me. I actually, in, uh, I mean, even in 70 mm, it was taking the full frame. So you can imagine. So this has got a different uh, feeling altogether. Now, uh, uh, Dinesh, can you go to the previous one, please? Yeah. So see the difference. Now, according to me, this picture, again, you blow it up 40 by 60 and put up your know, wall. You like to see this every day of your life. It will not overpower your, your personality. It will give you calmness. It will tell you, talk, talk to you about nature. It will tell you, please come to the nature. It will call you, it will invite you. But the other picture is not going to say, oh my God, what a powerful animal. You only think about it. Everybody, child knows that animal is powerful. What, what am I adding to it? You know? Uh, so therefore... This is what I have done my edition. This is what I have put my thought process and composed this picture, where the tiger should be, how the tree is coming, you know, all that. If I had put that tiger absolutely when it is going away, then this, this uh, photograph wouldn't have that much of power because it's, everything is coming together. My, my subject is very small, but my subject is zero. And you can figure out straight away in the picture. Now, the second picture, if you go, and over there, Dinesh, you go to the second picture. This one, or you want me to move forward? And the, the, uh, close up one, close up one. Yeah. And see the difference. This is not going to live with you for many, many years. You know, you will see it and it'll be, it'll actually, you will be overwhelmed, but you will not, it will not take you inside the photograph and, you know, uh, uh, over here, if you say, what was the tiger thinking when he's looking at me? I would say the tiger is looking at me to grab me and, you know, have a meal. You know, <laughs> that's it. But over there, I can say nature is so beautiful. And tiger and nature, they are coexisting. They need to coexist. And both are powerful. Tiger is big, tiger is powerful. But nature is even bigger and even more powerful. So amalgamation of both makes a great, uh, you know, you know, feeling basically. Okay, we can go to the next one. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, now, uh, uh, <laughs> it's very, very strange. You go to Corbett and everywhere, you see this little ring, uh, you know, flower. Everywhere. And they -da -da -da, they do sound. You don't like them. You know, it's uh, disturbing me, you know, things like that. But when I am in the jungle, I think it's God's creation. Everything is beautiful. You know, I saw this and I many times I've shot them. Such beautiful pictures. I like them actually with this, this, this you know, uh, uh, dry, uh, what you call grass, which are submerged into the water. And this uh, bird is walking into it. It To me, it looks like a Japanese painting, like brush strokes, you know, things like that. So therefore, uh, nothing is redundant in the jungle, each and everything. Even I can make, I have made a picture with tire marks in the jungle when I go. There are tire marks, which I'm not presenting here, but but you can make uh, you can make a picture if you want. If your left side is working, then you can make a picture with anything in the jungle. Okay, next one, Dinesh, please. Yeah, now you see this is a, this is called another patience you require. This is another patience now. This is a tele uh, lens shot, and you know I'm, most of my shoot I do handheld. So after a certain time, your hand actually gives up. But I knew that something is going to happen because I saw that many of these uh, you know spotted deer, male ones, they are grazing, and in front the you know wild boars are also feeding. So over there, I for about maybe five six minutes. I was holding that huge, say, lens and camera on my hand to see some, some time, actually, uh, uh, this uh, uh, thing, this, uh, what you call, the horn to come out from the, uh, what you call, uh, the boar's head. So somehow, by changing my angle a little, going a little lower, and they were all moving, they are not still. But then I managed to get this angle, which I quite like it. So next, okay, this is uh, another one like, uh, it's one of my favorite pictures. I did have seen it. Uh, uh, many people use this picture, magazines and everything. Uh, some uh, corporates also use this picture, huge blow up. I think, I think if I'm not wrong, sir, sorry for interrupting. I've seen this in Canon office as well. Yeah, they had put it up and also they have put it in their stores. Yeah, yeah. Now, now there's a story to it. Actually, I had uh, gone to Chhattisgarh and NDTV was uh, promoting Chhattisgarh. So they wanted me to go to their jungles so that they shoot a wildlife photographer in the jungle of Chhattisgarh. So, uh, so I went there and before their team arrived, I arrived a little early and uh, in Barnawapara. And uh, I, the, the forest guard was there with me. I said, let's go for a drive. He said that your team is not here, it doesn't matter. Let's just go for a drive. I went there, we passed the you know forest over there. Suddenly I came into this brown forest. It was really glowing. It is actually man-made forest. It is not a, a, a natural forest because they grew a lot of, uh, what do you call, uh, a teak uh, plant uh, over there. And wherever there's teak plantation, uh, always remember that there will be no undergrowth. So no animals stay there. So there will be no, uh, no deer, no monkeys, nobody will find over there. Uh, and a teak uh, forest generates a lot of heat. And this in the middle of the summer. But as we are driving slowly, I was enjoying the, the jungle so much. And suddenly I heard, I, I didn't hear because the, the best part of tiger is even if they are walking on a uh, dry leaf, they don't make any noise. Even a, even if a, a small uh, spotted deer walks, you, you know, elephant, you know that somebody, something is around. Even a bird moves around on dry leaves, you know. But when the tiger moves in, there's no sound. I don't know how that is God's creation, basically. So the tiger, I saw a little bit of it coming in and my hands started trembling because, oh my God, it's happening in front of me. I mean, the color, look at the color of the, uh, 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 what you call the jungle. Look
look at the color of the tiger and both in front of me this picture is nothing what i saw in front of my eyes is so brilliant actually what i saw in my eyes but still you know i managed to get one tiger over there like for many years they couldn't see tiger they in that jungle they had put uh, camera traps and they found when i was there they found a uh, tiger movement one tiger movement a little bit but nobody else saw a real tiger with their own eyes so this is a you know i have got special attachment to this picture okay that even just the scale of the trees and everything is just so fabulous yeah, yeah. now again, again i say the same thing i had you know i was alone in that jungle with my you know uh, driver i could have done anything i could have gone close up and i got a beautiful tiger but instead of doing that i pulled back i wanted a wide angle shot you know so uh, uh, i i really wish that i had kept a little bit of foreground but you can't get everything but believe me next 3 days we are there and with ndv team we didn't see a tiger yeah there were leopards and all that this i shot in in kenya again this is uh, uh, again patience because uh, i was getting late to go back because the timing you have to go back to your forest rest house but even then i told the guy let's wait let's wait something is going to happen and then i got many 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 pictures is one of them actually they are playing first there are four of them four kids were there they are playing together and then suddenly they uh, you know they start pulling each other's uh, tail but this happened for a split of a second it looks like it happened for a long time they are playing like human kid play for you know half an hour it's not like this a split of a second i had to capture this next wow yeah this is again one of my favorite picture now just imagine you put your thumb on that elephant it's a beautiful sunset shot isn't it see there is water there is mountain there is uh, you know uh, uh, forest all around beautiful sky you know evening light what more do you want but remove that elephant from there you have removed the soul then the 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 landscape has become dead you know so it is just beautiful landscape that's it here the composition the you know placement of that elephant the uh, you know big bigness or smallness i call it big but actually visually it is small that small elephant how much it's adding to that uh, uh, you know uh, photograph and and just imagine if i had shot in the center this picture would be working because there are those black you know uh, what you call uh, things coming in so this is working best at this uh, fag end of the of, of the canvas next so uh, previous one you saw uh, if i say i am a landscape artist you can't say no i am not a landscape artist yes i am a landscape artist this is a landscape but i went there to shoot wildlife but then the way i composed this picture is you know you have to do a lot of research you have to wait you have to this is all patience because on that rock you know i know uh, uh, my my knees were breaking actually i was still with my 17 mm lens uh, i don't love this with 14 mm but i was sitting there i knew this one will come and sit there uh, this one actually i'm i'm dyslexic so i don't remember names so uh, this particular bird is uh, a black wing kite which was roaming around hovering and then as luck would have it as i didn't move at all for about 7 uh, 8 minutes i was i was like a log i was waiting there with my camera it came and sat you know and and i got the click and so split of a second i had to get it yeah wow wow this is amazing now, uh, <laughs> this is you know i is very funny uh, recently i had done a, a show in ifax and uh, it's a group show and summer managed to come dinesh was not here so he couldn't come so these were large prints over there so uh, some of the forest officials came very very high officials and they say agash we see this in covert many times and we wait uh, to these uh, manas to fly away then only click we always think that these manas are spoiling our shot but look at it those 
those bloody manas you have put them in such a beautiful manner that they are making the picture you know so so as i say uh, i don't there's nothing in the jungle there's nothing reject for me you know everything you can make a good picture with dinesh yes. everything is working here everything yeah. <laughs> and this obviously the result of your very high shutter speed right yeah absolutely That's how you got the birds okay. totally frozen there yeah even at 2000 they find some flutter you know some places mm -hmm. yeah yeah now this is again a, a, generally you don't see that this painted stock in covid but uh, there's a this is a year when there was a little bit of flood over there and then you know nothing no animals were seen everything vanished but then as i said you can i mean uh, if you wait if you have patience then you find something or other which with which you can make your picture i really like this this is this looks like a lot of people tell me you desaturated the background and then you know enhance the uh, is this a natural shot is exactly how i clicked it nothing done with this one only as sharpness uh, i have increased a little bit that's it okay but even if you desaturated the background it's really your call right i mean Doesn't yeah, it is, but I didn't do it here. Uh, yeah. What I'm trying to say, the natural color is like that. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm not saying right or wrong. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. another one of your famous photographs, right? Yeah, this is also this. In fact, uh, one of the very very uh, senior forest official who did recently a doctorate from America, some big university. and from there i got a call that can i have couple of your tiger pictures he has access to all the best photographer in india and abroad also but he he took uh, three or four of my pictures and he presented his tiger uh, uh, thesis on tiger actually and he got a doctorate on it and then the university asked him uh, if if they if they can get a big blow up of this picture which will they they'll put in the middle of their university somewhere so then i send him a you know a vertical high res picture then they made a big print so uh, that it is looks, it, it looks sir sir it looks like all the tigers uh, are your pet tigers they are walking parallel to you so as yeah, no. you first go there stand there then they cross the road and you take the picture yeah the thing is you see like uh, if i show you i've got many pictures where they are facing me going this way going that way but what i present is when they are crossing because that is the that is the time i find they look uh, very elegant now a lot of people will disagree with me uh, they they always say that you know i have seen some people asking me have you got a head on uh, picture i have got a head on picture but my story i can't tell with a head on picture all the time you know so therefore i i, I take the pictures which i think are the are the uh, you know best elegance of that animal comes out the best basically this is amazing this is really beautiful yeah next one i think uh, you let me know what how much time we have i uh, i can go faster also if you want no, this, uh, this again, we, have, we have time this is again uh, you know uh, in uh, kenya masai mara now this is of uh of uh, the microphone yeah because i had taken down i was really uh my blood was bursting so i had to take a leak so i came out of the jeep which are not supposed to do it but what to do when you have to go you have to go i was taking a leak i was on the other side and then suddenly i saw the masai uh, guy who was with me he from a distance from his jeep he is pointing towards me like he's waving at me and so look back and i saw behind me this cheetah is coming you know then i know if i run that time the cheetah will grab me within a second actually i didn't run i kept on looking at the cheetah and then the cheetah stopped then i went back a little bit it was about say 3 feet away from me on the jeep so i picked up my camera luckily i had a shorter lens on it and i clicked this picture so you you are on feet at the moment you are not in the yeah, jeep yeah i am on the feet you can see i am on the ground level actually almost yeah wow and here's an example of how the animal has made the landscape rather than you yeah. know being part yeah. of the landscape yeah. 
Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. And the sky, everything is adding. This is another one yeah. of my series of landscape, basically. So this is also another one, and uh, this one is uh, this one is called uh, blackwing kite. Sorry, yeah, this one is blackwing kite. No, it so, is. Yeah, yeah, blackwing kite. Yeah. I am actually I, I forget names. I, I mean, Dinesh knows about it. We had a very good experience once, long time ago. So uh, <laughs> we're very bad with names. So uh, and I say I'm bad with names, so I, I become worse actually. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is uh, uh, again like the weight, long weight, and and long weight, not without any reason, but knowingly praying that something happens in front of you, and this happened. So I thought it's a beautiful way of capturing the landscape and also capturing the portrait of a kite. Next, next year. Oh, and lovely! You you uh, should. Um, kind of create a new genre for wildlife it is like wild landscapes uh, yeah yeah <laughs> so uh, this is another one now this one you see that he's uh, he or she i don't know is standing in one foot over there again again a long 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 wait actually early winter morning you know very cold chill but i'm sitting on the grass i'm i'm i've come out of uh, my jeep and sitting on the grass next to my jeep though. And then, uh, you know, uh, this guy was flying here and there and they fly very fast from one place to the other, they keep hopping actually. So this came and sat with, these, these are all, you see in the picture, because the whole uh, uh, landscape is so static, you feel that this bird was standing in front of me on one leg and doing yoga for five minutes, 10 minutes, no. It is for a second, stood there and flew within a second, you know. So, uh, but the picture tells you a story that it is actually, you know, it, it was uh, uh, posing for me. So next one. This is again, like I put this, see as a, uh, what you call, um, uh, uh, as a uh, wildlife photographer, this bird is again, most commonly seen everywhere. You go to, uh, you know, um, across the Yamuna, you'll find everywhere, wherever there is water body, you'll find this bird. Again, like, uh, the, but the, uh, the sequence of this is the precision of three flying together. Not, I have many shots of all three, four of them flying, and then again sitting, again flying. I'm also moving along with them. I'm changing my location just to grab one master uh, picture. Because uh, when you go to the jungle, I, what I do is I, I, I take um, many, 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 many pictures. But then uh, say if I've taken 2000 pictures and come back and I find if I find say five pictures out of the 2000 is at least uh, you know, worth uh, seeing, I'm lucky. One or two pictures, if we can make from one trip, is uh, I, I feel I'm, I'm very lucky, I'm, I'm grateful, you know? So this is one of the pictures where the, it talks about the precision, it talks about the technical aspect of it, because background was dark, the, uh, the birds were absolutely white, they could have bleached out, and uh, then uh, I didn't want them fluttering, uh, uh, so I wanted a high speed, uh, so therefore everything is, technically this is, uh, this, this is pretty good, I should say. And also compositionally, it is a very good shot, you know, according to me. Yeah, next. Also seems to be like, uh, you know, uh, three different stages of flight. Yeah, uh, yeah. They are three different birds, yeah. but almost like it's a, you know, what do you call that, a multi-exposure yeah. or something. Yeah. The same bird like, going forward. It's like as if it's a um, multi-exposure kind of a thing. Exposure, yeah. So what happens over there, what, what these birds actually, all of them together, they are eating, they are fishing, they are actually taking weeds out. But the moment one flies, all of them fly. So they don't fly all together. So it is one, two, three. And so one, you have captured this one, second, third, you know, like that actually uh, it comes. Yeah. This is again like 
my favorite because uh, again landscape playing and and this part actually this is called uh, ningola side of kobet where uh, generally you don't find tigers but uh, i had gone to ningola and then i got to little ahead there is a place called gojra there uh, there is a forest guard was there and he said that saab main 30 30 saal se kaam kar raha hu jungle mein jungle ke andar hi rehta hu maine aaj tak tiger nahi dekha tha aaj subah ek tiger mere ko dikha mere ghar ke samne se nikla so i said man then this tiger is around you know i told my guy chotu was with me delshad is a great guy because all these pictures i could make because of my guides which is uh dilshad is one guy kalim is another guy like that there are a couple of guys who actually help you without whom i am a blind person actually whatever i told them their nuances are so good they understand the jungle so well because they are living in and out uh, in the jungle so they know then they said to uh, so, uh, dilshad said sir agar yahan pe aaya tha to ye aas paas mein hi hai yahan pe ye pahad ke upar abhi chahega nahi So let's go to the you know uh, Ningora side from Goja. We came back to Ningora side, and we, I mean, as luck would have it, we found this tiger over there. And not only found the tiger, tiger in its full form, you know. Yeah. Now just see, see again sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Now again, this is actually timing only. there uh, generally you see one uh, you know uh, bird of prey uh, but there are uh, two of them not that they were sitting on the same tree the other one was from another tree but they jumped uh, that one actually uh, flew away so this one uh, was trying to fly and just before that i captured this so as a composition i i quite like it there's a lot of movement in this composition in that blue sky and this breaking of that Uh, you know breaking the canvas from the center this uh, dead uh, tree burnt tree is according to his adding to the dynamic composition and it should be almost an instinctive shot you know rather than a yes, plan yeah. one right? yeah, yeah 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 i think that visual flow is also getting created the flight of that bird is in the same direction as the as the top bird is looking yeah 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 and again again if you notice it carefully the texture of the bird and texture of the right. tree they are quite similar yeah 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 wow okay. oh beautiful is back near to depur this ah, is now here yeah, this picture is actually this is again a, this is a documentary picture okay this is not a wildlife wildlife picture documentary picture if you see on the top there are three uh, what you call peacocks okay underneath there are two leopards and underneath there is a, a temple where yeah. the uh, pujari comes every day i saw the pujari coming there and uh, uh, so far i have asked them that uh, these leopards didn't do anything to anyone they come and one day i saw the i don't have that picture but uh, another friend of mine took that picture is uh, uh, both of them came down sitting in front of instead of pujari they are sitting there and playing with the flag they tore one of the flag and they are playing with the flag so it is it is the to just to show you people uh, the leopards i shot and you see there is a eye kind of a hole there uh, over here there is a is a hole here they were sitting there this like an eye you know and uh, they do not know ah uh, yeah the leopards do not know that there are uh, you know uh, there are food going like which is uh, peacocks, peacocks. <laughs> and peacocks do not know because because of the uh, tele lens the is compactness you can't make out the uh, this thing they are quite down below actually so mm. they don't know each other that they are, they are existing there so okay next so no, this question. is the kind of photograph even if as a painter you would not you would find it you know you would disbelieve the fact that you know, this could have happened so perfectly Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the symmetry between the peacocks, the leopards, the uh, flags, the and those four or five flowers on the side. My God, it just yeah. <laughs> yeah actually, flag and that uh, somehow kind of orange is uh, complementing each other. Yeah, that beautiful triangle gets formed at the bottom, right? Yeah. yeah. You know the triangle there, then the triangle yeah. being yeah. 
it's it's it repeated with the peacocks in the top yeah 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 it's beautiful love this <laughs> They're so graceful, yeah. Oof. So yeah. the same oh, space, yeah. That's why I put it up, and uh, and 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 there are many pictures. Here, the decisive moment is actually the uh, the foot. One foot is dangling. I'll show you one or, one or two couple of pictures. I love this, uh, you know, feeling of the the leg dangling. That means it gives you a movement. It gives you a force mm -hmm. that they are actually moving fast. And the way they are moving, as if they are going for a shikar. Yeah, yeah. And also, of course, the lighting help, the texture help, the rock formation help. Everything actually is helping to enhance the photograph. No, which is why this would be that one photograph out of five hundred which you would choose to even you know uh, share publicly. Otherwise, why would you? Yeah. Everything's fallen in place here. Yeah. yeah. Wow, oh. <laughs> this is Karthi Brajan's decisive moment. <laughs> this one I was talking about is right in the middle. Leg is dangling, you know. Look at the elegance. Look at the pause. Look at the you know the uh, straight line he's walking in with the with with the tail, you know. So yeah. uh, I just love this picture. And in the middle, there's this uh, triangle is forming. The roughness and the uh, you know texture of the of the rock and the texture of the leopard. Only leopard texture is slightly bigger than the rock texture. And the uh, direction in which the eye is looking, yeah, it's uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's going to jump up next. Yeah, yeah. You can feel that sense of tension as he's yeah, he's yeah. going to uncoil. Yeah. So this is what I call a story, actually. When you look at the picture, you keep looking at it. It takes you in more depth. You start imagining what they might be doing. You know, uh, you can go to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, as Jesse said, that these are like uh, your own pets. The way you manage to orchestrate every shot. I mean, the timing is so unbelievable that how you can do this in nature. You know? Actually, uh, you know, there, there are three of us were shooting this while doing this. One was uh, Devi Singh, who was the you know, with whom we're staying there. He has a you know, nice resort there. Another friend of mine, and uh, uh, he was he stays there, so he shoots every day there. And he took me to this place. And uh, the other guy, the friend of mine, he was also there. He was very very attentive. He also shooting continuously. But when we came back, he asked me that when did you click this one? So maybe at that particular point of time, he might have got distracted with something else. So he might find something else is right shooting something else. But I didn't. I was constantly you know on this rocks. Sir, just just, just to just on the lighter note, were yeah. they getting bored because uh, we were our our streaming was getting delayed and they yawned. I know. They are young. <laughs> so this should have been the first picture. Picture, you know. <laughs> so, it should have been the first one. <laughs> so what happened was like they they were yawning now and then. You know, one was yawning, other was sleeping, and this like that. And suddenly, they, when they yawned together, I didn't have. I didn't. If I had missed that moment, you know, you know, uh, I could have killed myself. Now the yeah. thing is, this picture. Really? Uh, this picture, National Geographic also published it, and also, uh, I mean, uh, what you call in New York, some some company had took took this picture from me, high res, and they have blown up this huge, huge uh, hoarding and put it up in the middle of New York. They, I mean, they actually found this picture so fascinating. This three years ago, they had put it up over there. Okay, next. And this this is like an eye. If you see this, exactly yeah, like an yeah. eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, Akash, uh, just for our knowledge, uh, I mean, you know, obviously it's all timing and all that. Approximately, how many frames you must have shot or waited? How much time would this picture like this would have taken you once you were in position? See, uh, uh, I was shooting for three days. Okay, two and a half days rather. 
Right. And uh, each time when things were happening, see, they were coming, playing, going away, going for the food. And suddenly I saw some small camels, wild camels. They went for the camel, actually. So I went with the torch behind them because it was pretty uh, late evening. So I was shooting uh, quite a bit of it. But once they were there, you know, uh, I feel it's my personal experience. Uh, if I'm shooting a picture like this, where I want to compose, I don't go with a, you know, machine gun. I actually uh, take a couple of pictures, wait, see what is happening. I don't lose my eye contact, no matter what happens. As I was saying, these rocks are very, very hard, you know, and I wear shorts. So it was almost like I, I actually, uh, my legs were hurting so much of this. They were like poking everywhere, my, my bottom, my legs and everywhere. But I was waiting there, something will happen. And then I couldn't handle my camera, so I actually lied down, you know, put my uh, hand on the, on, the, on the rock and uh, I was waiting. So I would have taken in, in, in a day, uh, in the span of say about two hours, uh, first of all, let me tell you that I was there around uh, this, um, I think this is the evening shot, uh, around two o'clock we reached there and this happened around 5, 5.30. So on that rock, which is burning hot, you're sitting there with your shots, you know? So right. uh, then when it came, I didn't want to miss out on any picture. So I would have clicked at least, uh, say, 200 pictures in that uh, area. Not only this, there's this area, but in and around. Minimum 200, 225 pictures. Okay. So you can say about five hours, five to six hours, and 200 pictures. Okay. And mm -hmm. maybe one of them or two of them are, are okay, presenting. This is again, I call like I'm a landscape artist. So uh, uh, this again, I, I love this picture because the, you know, also I, I believe strongly that your luck also have to play because the, the middle one, the, the, he's the head and he's the biggest and he has got the biggest horn without which this picture would have been, you know, not half as good. If, yeah. if one of the smaller ones were standing there, then I believe that picture would have been less power, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sky, of course, sky, that tree, everything is making that point of view because uh, they roam around in, in Africa. There's all savannas, grassland and, you know, open. So I wanted to capture that openness rather than going tight close up on the animals. Yeah. It's my favorite saying, which I made up myself, Akash, that the serendipity goddess only bestows her kindness on people who wait and have patience. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we keep talking about luck and how you're lucky, but you have to be there. You have yeah. to want something to happen. It's almost like you will it to happen then. And that, yeah, to my course. mind, the serendipity is not just, you know, sheer luck. Luck yeah. happens to... Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. Yeah. And also, you see, as I said, there's a there is a difference between waiting and your uh, what you call um, what you call uh, the anticipation. Uh, you know, yeah. ah, yeah. you you have to wait with something in mind, and yeah. then things will happen because things happen. I have seen with myself that something we are there, two or three of us, great things happen. Either I missed or somebody else has missed because you know all the time we are not being concentrating. We are not you know, putting our patients into work uh, 100% that way. Uh, another, another thought, uh, probably you will uh, um, let us know better. Uh, you also mentioned in between that study your subject. So knowing the subject behavior, understanding the subject behavior, does it help? Because then you would know that this bird or this animal is going to come back after some time. Yeah. Or it's going to turn back or it's going to move away or move in a particular direction. Yeah. So uh, it, it actually helps you hell of a lot because uh, if you know, for example, uh, I've studied uh, elephant for a very, very, very long time. And there was a time when I was uh, initially I used to get scared of elephants, but then I studied it and all that. And it, it repeatedly I found that if you are uh, surrounded by the elephant herd and if you don't move, if you, as if you're not even breathing, you are no movement. Even your shutter uh, is not making any sound, the elephant will not do anything to you. So learning from there, 
I have learned how to work quietly. I've learned how to wait for, our, you see the thing is, the animals are always around you. But the moment the elephants see you're moving, they get scared. You will be seeing now in your veranda, uh, you know, during lockdown period, there's a bird sitting. The moment you move a little bit from your chair, the bird will fly away. So even in the jungle, same thing happens. A bird is a kite or, or a, a bird of prey, an owl is sitting uh, about 100 meters away from me. But the moment I move, they become conscious and then they fly away. So I have to know that I should not move. I should not whisper. Elephants, actually, they hate human whisper. The tigers, they really dislike human whisper. But if we don't know these, these uh, nuances of wildlife, then how we will reach up to you? How will I get a great shot? Anybody, if you, if you read, say, uh, David Yarrow or Nick Brown, uh, you will find that they are all actually, they have studied their subject so well, then they know that uh, even then the, the, the uh, animals are unpredictable. But if you don't make anything foolish, which I've done many times, I've done foolishness, I've shown my foolishness, I would have got killed in, in my initial days only in the jungle because I jumped out of my Jeep and I, I started taking a uh, seven-day-old uh, elephant cubs picture with the mother on, you know. And, and the way it attacked me, luckily my brother was on, on the Jeep and the engine was on, but he, he drove away. He drove away, I left behind and not that he didn't want to take me, but he couldn't have. The elephant came and hit the uh, Jeep and Jeep actually went a little bit of, you know, disbalanced. And when he, uh, you know, raved, it, it created a lot of sound, noise and the dust. So the elephant went away to, uh, look at the kid, whether the kid is all right, I got saved. So this was his strategy and I got also saved. So I did many, many, many foolish things. So uh, if I don't learn all these things, if I don't have those, if I, I'm, I'm in their house and if I don't value their uh, you know, sentiments, then how will I uh, become a good photographer? Absolutely, sir. Very well said. That's very well said, yeah. Very well said, yeah. This is again, I had posted it a couple of days ago. Yeah. <laughs> again, like uh, one side, you can see the silhouette of the other uh, elephants. There are many, many, many elephants actually, maybe 70, 80 elephants all around. Wow. And 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 on the, the right hand side of this is little hill, hilly. So Jeep cannot go there. And uh, left hand side, uh, if you're facing the uh, elephants, left hand side is uh, deep uh, down, so you can't take your jeep there, and in front and back, and you are surrounded by elephants. So, uh, what do you do? Suddenly, uh, one lady decided, you know, they didn't like us or whatever. They decide. She decided. She started throwing, stumping her foot, and you know, they do mock charge first, and then they finally she started running, and everyone, little kid, to everyone, started running towards us. And I thought that day is is the end, but then. Before the end, I said, let me say, take some good pictures. But I had 100 mm with me. And this is the, you know, you can see his head is getting cut. And uh, it, it is so close. Then finally it came. And then I stopped clicking because I couldn't even focus. And it came and it touched the, uh, you know, back behind bar, not the bar, the uh, spare tire. Just, you know, just touched it. And then stopped. And then all of them stopped. And then they made some sound, like that sound, which itself is like trumpet, you know. And then they retrieved that. They found, maybe they found that we are not uh, creating any danger or anything. We are like, you know, um, uh, uh, not hampering them. So therefore, they left us alone. But in, in, a, in a situation like this, I faced a couple of times earlier also, what you, suppose is one elephant, one rogue elephant comes and attacks you. What you got to do, you have to know. He, you, uh, you climb on the highest point of your uh, car, and you throw your head, uh, throw your hat into the air, and raise your hands. So that what happens? The elephant sees something taller than him. The elephant doesn't attack you. So uh, twice it happened that that saved me. But this one, 
only god i mean god always saves us definitely but i don't know how it uh, on its own like they all stop that then we would have been crushed totally this angle yeah. is awesome because um, it it's almost as if you are sitting on the ground because yeah yeah appears that yeah actually i was actually uh, on on there is a spare tire in open jeep so first i was keeping my camera on that i was balancing on it then when this started closing up i stopped tilting i retreated back i because there is no space so i was sitting little back and it came like about maybe 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 uh, one feet uh, that's the gap in a spare tire gap it came up to there wow now i like this because this is time stand still that's the feeling i get i don't know what the viewers get that's the feeling i get they are not they are absolutely static over there calmness you know the whole jungle is calm but yet tiger you know uh, why most of the time i showcase uh, uh, the road in the jungle because uh, the tigers love to walk they walk they can walk up to 30 35 kilometers a day easily yeah. and a jungle is shrinking jungle area is shrinking because of you know uh, what you call uh, other people are uh, taking away their land so uh, they, now in suppose it is 10 km 30 forget about 30 km and 10 km km radius there are about four five families are living there so they can't walk much so therefore they walk within their area you know so this road tells you that there is a long way to go to conserve uh, uh, you know uh, tiger to respect their uh, you know their uh, moving areas to respect their uh, house their respect their home basically so this gives me that feeling that you know um, they love walking and then they uh, um, uh, they have to they have lo a long way to go wow oh. again wow. early morning uh, now there is the I, you know no no uh, auto focus will ever work in this area because this is totally foggy and uh, yeah. you see about 2 uh, meters you can't see what's happening so we are si just sitting and enjoying you know in, when when you can't do anything you just enjoy uh, the blankness of your canvas you know so uh, while imagining that i saw some far away some little bit of whiteness blowing in uh, two three birds moving around and all that suddenly it so happened that that weight paid off and one landed up just in front of me but i i like it like a painting you know when you blow it up it exactly it looks like a brush stroke It's i was just going to say that you know i normally hate it when people tell me that you know this photograph looks like a painting ah. so that's the first thing which i felt you know or this yes. looks like such a wonderful painting <laughs> Uh, so this be couple of days ago na yeah, yeah. oh. again like again manual focus because no focusing could have been done and mm. uh, i was following there were uh, you know these uh, they they shed, shed their uh, spotted deer when they grow up they shed their horn uh, you know yearly so the new ones grow up so this is the new one was little velvety uh, this thing and i have got many shots there were about four five of them beautiful shots i was getting there but i was not very satisfied with there i was like i am always hungry i am always in the jungle i want more and more you know i am not satisfied you know so uh, then it so happened that i saw uh, 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 the bird again far away moving i couldn't get them into the frame if i could get them into the frame it was because of the uh, very very low light they were all out of focus then finally i I found one which came closer. Sir, uh, uh, just to interrupt, have you ever witnessed them dropping their antelopes? Uh, no, I have not, but I have seen them. But you are not supposed to uh, pick it up. Yeah, you are not supposed to. But have you seen that falling off or? No, I have not seen. I have yeah. not. Seen. Okay. But I have seen herds of them without it. You know. Okay. That means recently they have uh, okay. popped up. It's like snake. They they actually. Leave their uh, outer skin. I think they are very privy about it, so they yeah. they don't do it in open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And any reason why you're not supposed to pick it up? I mean, other than it's uh, no, it, part of the wild. You know, uh, is there are many things actually from the jungle you are not supposed to pick up anything. You're right. Not, okay. Yeah. You are not get down. You're this not is part down. of that cycle of the jungle. Yeah. So. so if you start picking it up, you know you'll it'll pick up a you know a baby from there and you'll hide and you know you can do anything yeah. there. Okay. This is again a uh, uh, landscape like uh, generally you don't see elephant in this area because if anybody knows this area, I will never ever see an elephant. This is the only time I saw, twice I saw, of course. And this is a that dead old tree. And uh, this was uh, during the rainy season, this comes under the water actually. So that kind of uh, very prehistoric kind of uh, look. Uh, and I have got one pictures of the same elephant uh, where I shot it from the front and close. And uh, and this one, I prefer this one because this gives me that feeling, the elephant, the way it is walking, the way it is, uh, you know, half, uh, half, uh, what do you call, wet, half dry. It, it gives you that feeling of that bark of the tree. And also it gives you that feeling of, you know, uh, what do you call, uh, prehistoric, uh, prehistoric uh, photograph. And it almost looks like this tree is, you know, stepping in, you know, in, in rhythm with the elephant and is following it. Yeah, exactly. If you look at the branches, the way they are. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The legs like they're stepping forward. Absolutely, they they are replicate elephant actually. Yeah. This is again like it's, it's a composition basically. Uh, I have thought about it quite a bit without this white uh, bird uh, on its own. Elephant is not much, you know, but that out of focus bird is adding so much to this environment, to this lighting, to this, you know, is this a very, very simple landscape. You hardly see anything. You just see the grassland and a little bit of mountain behind, you know, but it's like a poetry, uh, the way yeah. the bird is flying, you know. So without the bird, probably your composition would have been totally different. Uh, it will be, uh, according to me, it was disbalanced actually. Because yes. I have a lot of pictures because the elephant was walking. So I had a couple of pictures without the bird. So I don't like them at all. And you see everything like the bird is flowing and the elephant also, the, the tail of the elephant is adding quite a bit, adding that movement actually. It's more poetic this way with the bird. Yeah, yeah. Actually, in photography, when you whichever photography we are doing, I always find once you come back and you start seeing them and you start getting more meaning out of it at that particular moment of time, maybe you're looking at lighting, composition, subject. But when you come back, when you review them, it's like editing a film, you know, then you get the right kind of feeling about that photograph. That's why I said during the lockdown, I don't have any time at all because I have, I, am, I make every day two pictures. Every day means I've got so many 30, 35 external hard drive. So when I go uh, to whether it's commercial shoot or it is a, you know, street photography or it is jungle photography, whenever I go, I come out with lots of material but then I don't have time to see all of them. I I am satisfied with three, four, oh, well, wow, good. Now, you know, let it be, let close the chapter. Now I'm getting enough time. So every day without making two pictures, I don't have my dinner, you know? So uh, that takes away till about 10, 30, 11, I have my dinner, you know? So I'm having a great time apart from other work. This is again, as I say, it is from prehistoric era. Uh, again, I was again, winter, January, uh, winter morning. And uh, uh, the, uh, the caved in land where there's a lot of water and dead oak trees and all that were there. And I saw this elephant coming in from, from, from inside the jungle. So when I saw a couple of them coming, I knew that something is going to happen. So I stay put there and waited and waited and I took many pictures, I took some close-ups, I took, you know, uh, landscape shots and all that. 
then finally is uh, if you see it, uh, you know um, you can't see my cursor but it's is forming a semicircle with the with the caved in uh, uh, what you call uh, ground and uh, the elephant's movement is completing that semicircle if you notice it carefully and yeah. again this one is is looks like desaturated right. but it's actually that is a natural color because uh, you know gloomy morning early morning uh, winter so it gives you that natural color like that so that is why i love this photograph this is beautiful this thank you this is again like uh, now in this picture why i put this one is that if i had just imagine if i had put lot of trees and all that i have captured the whole jungle with this composition i think i would have killed this composition the beauty of this composition is that they are together because i have shot this this uh, four uh, pair for a long time for two days actually and in one of them you saw already this rail thing these are the cubs actually now in this one if i had put any other uh, of course there are many plants and trees and the behind them but i eliminated everything in this case i went close up because i thought close up is giving me that graphic dimension their expression why are they all looking at one place and it, it is giving you that kind of a feeling it is giving you the story with a close up so i am not saying close up is uh, i don't do close up is at all i do close ups where i think it is required where i think here if i had taken the entire environment would have killed this expression of this in this four cups yeah wow. this is again like uh, you can see there uh, the beauty of this apart from the scene because you know uh, tigers they mate uh, generally they mate for uh, 72 80 times but over the period of two or three days and uh, uh, so they go hide mate come back come back and again go and during this time generally generally they don't go hunting because they believe in concentration that time and revive their energy again they do it you know so this is one such afternoon uh, where uh, there is a tall grass uh, on one side and uh, uh, we saw some movement over there then i found that uh, suddenly i uh, found that there is uh, one of the uh, tigress was coming out then uh, they shot told me that there's another one behind so then i saw a male then the male was chasing this female then they all started coming down they go they went river cross the river i have each and every moment of this and uh, another thing i want to say technically uh, never use a camera brand new camera where which you have never used earlier this is a particular model i was using for the first time and the first time i took it out uh, a brand new lens and a brand new camera and i didn't know a lot of technicalities of it i was actually uh, you know envisaging that this will be behaving exactly like my other cameras so it didn't it has its own limitations i didn't know that so my camera was going like uh, capturing slightly slower so when i click cut 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 this is where i needed that you know uh, machine gun like like that each and every moment capture so that my card should have been uh, uh, should have had more uh, you know buffering uh, less buffering time my body should have been uh, should have had a, a less buffering time uh, so that i could have captured that continuous uh, 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 what you call burst mode continuously maybe maybe 20 25 30 odd uh, frames here i was getting only five or six frames where i needed the most but it was a brilliant camera brilliant lens so i have got the pictures but then i would have got much more so i always tell people that i will come to that also while uh, when i get a new camera and then i practice it first then only i take it to the jungle so that is what i have to say about uh, don't take an equipment which you don't know about to the jungle no matter how great it is you know check everything the speed the uh, the I iso of that camera each time you go out of home with a new equipment okay next 
this is again uh, in Chhattisgarh while doing that project. But I particularly like this because uh, uh, I could have captured this close up of the birds, but I like this mammoth heavy holders. And then, then two, uh, you know, ballet, ballerinas actually doing ballet in the air, you know, so light. They are moving around like a kite. And these two are hard rock, uh, you know, standing there. So uh, that's kind of a, uh, what you call, um, uh, what you call uh, the uh, comparison, basically. It's actually making the birds look that much more delicate because of the rock. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's right. Yeah, beautiful contrast, definitely. Just see, you, you also see the watch, huh? How many, how many is like, are there 40 or? Uh, but, but what we can do is, after this, instead of narrating each and every story, uh, Dinesh can go tuck, tuck, tuck like that. If anywhere I have to say something special, then I will do that. Or if, if there is some special story behind something, please do share. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We will not said, do that. Now in this one again, I had like, you, of course you have to wait and all that. Of course there are a lot of calls over there and all that. Then the tiger finally came out. But what I like about it uh, is you see the layer of uh, the branches, you know, the uh, trees, the plants, the branches, the, the mountain, everything is adding so much of texture to this picture that this is the vicinity which a tiger requires, you know. You saw some pictures where they are just simple road, but this is the thickness of the forest where the foliage is so much important for the tiger. And the tiger is so small, the foliage is actually covering the tiger, yet the tiger is the hero. As a photographer, I have to show my subject well. So uh, if, I'm, if I manage to show both, then I feel that I'm really successful. But if I don't manage to show either of them well, then there's no point, you know? So uh, I don't want to eliminate uh, this. Is, so most of my pictures you will see that when I see my subject, I pull back more. And, and I pull back, why? Because I want to give you breathing space. Otherwise, what is the difference between a tiger in a zoo and tiger in the jungle? Tiger in the jungle is, as I said, then when you're going to Hawaii for your honeymoon and you come back with, you know, some close-ups. What's the point of doing that? You could have done it anywhere, you know. You could have done that near Jamuna. Uh, you went to Bali, you went to Haiti, you went to, you know, uh, Hawaii. Then show that, that you are there, actually. You're part of that, basically. Yeah, I think, I think further to add to that, what you're saying, that when you take a close-up, how can you say that, how can you prove that that was taken in its natural environment and not a zoo? Absolutely. Absolutely. But that actually, you, you have to leave it that benefit of doubt, you have to give it to the photographer. <laughs> Apart from that, uh, you, know, you know, like uh, if you see, say, 20 pictures or 50 pictures uh, of tiger, all almost close-ups. When you go back home, when you close your eyes, which picture do you remember? You know, so, so you're not creating an atmosphere. So atmosphere is helping you for your retention to keep in your mind that this is what I remember actually. Absolutely. Sir. Wow. This is again like uh, uh, again. Is this this, pardon me. Is it Corbett? A Corbett only. Yes. Okay. Uh, I love this Sal forest. So in the morning, generally, I actually roam around inside this Sal forest. Uh, this is another one. This one actually, this is taken in a zoo. Okay. Now, I was coming to this. I had bought a new lens about a couple of years ago. And then I didn't know next day I was going to the jungle. So I said, look, I have not used this lens. Let me see. Let me go and shoot some bird. So that I, I want to see a handheld. How can I actually take some uh, flying bird pictures. But birds though I shot, but this I found in between. The beautiful lighting, you know, they're all black bugs together. I've never seen so many, I've seen many times, I've shot many times black bugs in the, you know, Jaisalmer area. But so many of them together sitting there, I thought it's an interesting picture. 
So yeah. why I, I showed this picture is basically to share with you my idea that if you are taking a new equipment, please take it out of your house, whether you're going to the zoo or you go anywhere else. Uh, because I bought the lens for bird photography, so therefore I went to the zoo to try it out. So you pl please try it out beforehand so you know what is the weight of that lens, how long can you hold it in your hand, and what all you can do with it. So that's my request to everyone who buys a new equipment. Absolutely, the good advice. Oh, <laughs> look at this. That. A classic. <laughs> now, here the story is, I must tell you the story here again. I, I'll, I'll cut it short. I was actually uh, following this tiger because as you see this, this uh, land landscape has got a lot of uh, in a beard, they are up and down, up and down, up and down because of the uh, tall grass you can't make out, but they are all up and down. So one moment you see the tiger, one moment, second moment you don't see it. So I was waiting for the tiger and then when I saw the tiger, I saw, uh, you know, in the like I, my camera is focusing on the tiger. Then I saw that something white coming towards me and these birds, they are flying, say, at 50, 60 kilometers an hour, they just took off and they started coming towards me. I said, oh my God, I have to, you know, like, like put them together. But then before I could do, now, now in the split of a second, do I actually, I had autofocus on, do I actually uh, uh, put the birds uh, in uh, focus or the tiger in focus? I decided to, since I had already focused on the tiger, and I was using back focusing, I pressed my back focus, kept the tiger in focus and put the birds in frame and then click. So split of a second, I would have got two shots only. And next shot doesn't have all the birds. Some of them are two or three, but this, I thought this bird is forming like an eye. Yeah. So yeah, ideally, absolutely. ideally I should have said, I should have said I'm over ambitious if the, if the Tiger was in the middle, you know, the eyeball. <laughs> now you can't, you know, I'm just kidding. But even then, it's uh, like, it's a, uh, uh, it's a nice atmospheric picture. Beautiful. Zone. It's one of the best here. Yeah. Wow. Wow. This again, like, this is shot yeah. during, uh, you know, uh, this January only. Uh, uh, so it was like cloudy morning. It was drizzling and all that. Then uh, we went across the river. Then, you know, uh, then found a tiger, which was like a small, uh, uh, like a small something moving we saw far away in the water, you know, start, slowly start coming closer and closer and closer and then uh, moved across actually. So the tiger is totally drenched and you can see that little bit of droplet also you can see underneath uh, because of the backlit. Now the tiger here looks more like a monkey because it's totally wet and uh, early morning. So this is my landscape, uh, you know, tiger landscape or landscape tiger, whichever we call it. No, also I think this is the difference between being an artist and being uh, a camera owner. <laughs> I think I have a question, but I'll come, come to that later. First, first, let's immerse ourselves in this visual treat. Yeah, exactly. Actually, you know, like I would say, like, can you ever say that is the best singer in the world, is the best artist in the world? Nobody is best. Every photographer who each his own, he is doing his own genre of work. This is my genre of work. That is why I'm presenting it like that. Not that any other genre is different. This is a brilliant, brilliant photographer, uh, David Yaro. If you see, he only shoots close up. And he only shoots like low angle and he also shoots it camera trap. But that is not my genre. You know, I don't see myself doing that ever. If you give me a trap camera and you say shoot like this, I'll not be able to do it like the way he does, you know. So to each his own, basically. Yeah, you have to understand who you are and what your strength and what yeah, your exactly. is. Yeah. Yeah. This is again, a, you know, decisive moment, basically. The two of them and you, you see that how they actually, uh, there's like a dart, you know, like an arrow, which goes in a chat and it, the, the fish cannot go anywhere. And then they throw the fish in the air, then they swallow it. 
So yeah, this is super. Wow. This is again another landscape. And uh, now without this uh, uh, samba, this landscape would have been totally soulless, heartless for me. It would have been just a nice, pretty, oh wow, pretty, pretty landscape people would have said. But this one to me is adding so much of value. Uh, and it's only minute scale. This is one hundredth of that whole canvas size. But yeah. straight away your eye is going there. That is how you place it actually. That depends upon how you place it. Right, right. With camera movement, with a millimeter movement here and there, you can make or break a, a composition. Really, yeah. I think this entire completion of the stream, that mist, that yeah, two on the right hand side, that small animal. It's I I am into landscape photography. When I look at this image, I say, okay, wow, this this deer would have had I been there, so probably we would have tried a similar composition with our selfie. Yeah. <laughs> but but this is amazing. This is crazy. If you see on the left hand side, there's a little bit of uh, that island is ending with an arrow. Okay. Yeah. yeah and then yeah, there's yeah. a gap between the water. Suppose I propped it one millimeter in my camera from one, there. I one. just imagine the shot. It would have gone for a six. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. This is again another one, my favorite. This is also recently I shot. And uh, uh, the the a the tiger and the and the uh, tree positioning of the tree and the little bit of mountain coming in through the uh, cloud, you know, that little bit of uh, uh, hanging mountain is also, I believe, is adding quite a bit to the whole. Balances picture. the yeah 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 yeah. This, uh, by the way, color pitch is also very nice. Yeah. This, from the same uh, episode where they were actually coming out of the grassland and then they were, you know, running. Uh, previously, I showed you that male, female chasing each other. They were running into the water then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, the same one. Okay. Uh, same one. Before they came into the water. So, I've got many shots of that genre, that, that sequence. That's brilliant that's since the other tiger just for entering the frame, you know. Yeah. That's so much tension to the picture. Yeah. Can you imagine if I if I had moved this from the left hand side and I had taken more uh, on the right hand side, then I would have got half of that tiger. I didn't because yeah. I like this. And this has to happen in split of two thousandth of a second. Wow. Uh, this, so I've already explained the same same thing, various postures. Wow. This again, like I, I like this picture because uh, see the the eye, eyebrows above the eye, they are glowing. They look like eye of this tiger, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, just see, this time the tiger is looking at me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is asking you that I have arrived. Now you should move to your next spot. Let me cross that there also. <laughs> your, your secret discussion going on there. <laughs> this again, I like this picture. Again, the stillness, the lighting, you know, this is an evening shot. And the, it, it tells, tells about that just before, uh, uh, you know, the dusk. This shot was taken, and both of them were wet. They were coming out of the water, so I quite like this color scheme of this picture. Yeah, it's also the dappled light, which is so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Now this is uh, I mean, how I don't know all these pictures I showed you. This is a uh, uh, unbelievably it happened actually, because uh, I have got pictures with this. Uh, uh, a group of uh, this uh, big male, uh, what you call deer, all of them are grazing and uh, all of the nice light was falling on them. I've got many pictures, three of them together, four of them together, alone and all that. Then I was concentrating on one and uh, got some nice pictures. Then again, as I said, I'm always greedy. I'm waiting, waiting something, you know, something, let them fight in between or let something happen, some commotion happen. And then I saw the the you know birds 
coming and and I moved my Jeep a little bit. I told you know the driver to move it a little bit and said myself and the uh, the what you call uh, deer head was down and the moment they, they landed he also put his head up and i get the picture now another uh, thing is there if you notice carefully there are two birds not only one bird i see there are two heads uh, oh, and wings oh, yeah it's absolutely yeah. perfectly in line with the neck yeah so so you see what i try to say is uh, when uh, you uh, we, we, we talk about like making a picture uh, a picture cannot made be uh, cannot be made twice at least look wise you can't copy this you know any of the pictures but if you take only close up you can copy the picture over and over again for example suppose i was shooting this particular guy and i take close up then i could shoot many times the same same picture maybe lighting will be a little different but if I shoot them with the composition, with my own created composition, then that shot can never be replicated ever, ever again. If you, if you tell me, I'll never be able to do it again, you know? So yes. this one of a kind shot. Yeah, that, that, what you said is absolutely right. But there's another thought, uh, an extension to what you're saying probably is that, let us say if you are really cropping in tight and zooming in tight and you are there's no room to really move around the frame, within the frame. It yeah. is too tight. And the animal moves. You will struggle even to locate the animal in your frame. Yeah, yeah. With this kind of wide composition, slight movement here and there, you are able to capture it beautifully. You do not miss any movement at all. Yeah, exactly. But you know, the thing is, having said that, you have to know uh, that comes from your ex uh, experience. That, for example, suppose I had shot this at f8 or f11 can you imagine what would have happened i would have killed this shot before it uh, no. it was uh, yeah absolutely. everything would be sharp the background foreground would have been so more. in that moment yeah. i have to decide that what i want in focus you know right. i don't want to there's a lot of there's a lot of gap between the uh, uh, the uh, um, what you call the, the deer, deer and the bird, and the bird. Yeah. there's a lot of gap and the bird is more in focus because I manually focus it in between. So therefore you can, the, uh, and the aperture would have been only 5.6, not even F, F8 because it's morning and it was like very, very low light. So you have to decide that particular time that where, uh, uh, what is the exposure? What is the, you know, uh, and also I had to shoot this very high speed. This would have been some thousandth of a second. Yeah. Uh, you can surpass this one. Finish also, if you put down button, hey, does it work? No. Does change down button? Oh. This is again like I don't want to say anything. You can see the picture. Also, very rare picture. Really? And you, you don't, you know the story now. They are made for each other. Yeah. And I say they are made for each other. They are mad for each other. Actually, a couple never live uh, without each other. If yeah. one dies, the other one also normally found, they also uh, commit suicide right. by not, not eating and things like that. But here you see two couples together. They are not fighting. They were. They were doing some kind of a dance in front of me. They did it, you know. They came out of the water. They were eating weeds, and I was very lucky to be there and capture them both, like dancing, uh, like uh, short. Bharatpur. Ah, this is in Bar uh, Kiola Dev. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This again, like uh, the kids, uh, always mimic their parents. They are they are trying to uh, mimic the parents. But what is, according to me, is making the picture or decisive moment or what do you call it, are these manas around. Yeah. Because the kids are playing. The manas are also actually enjoying it. And then they are moving around, flying around, you know, like butterflies. Uh, this, uh, uh, what you call, if you see, and this is not intentional, by the way, later on I discovered 
that you know the the uh, tree the what do you call the texture of the tree that yeah. wood tree is like the, the stripe of the, of the tiger stripe yeah. of the tiger yeah. quite similar you know and this was taken totally when it was foggy so i had to do a lot of work on the tiger to get some sharpness in it so this is done in in uh, what you call uh, lightroom you go and select a brush and partially you actually uh, do clarity you know so you get that portion clear if you do whole thing clarity then you will see a lot of grain in the picture so you don't do that only partial areas where you you put your uh, brush there and then you go into clarity you, you either you want to make it uh, out of focus de clarify it or clarify it or de haze it you know like that i got this uh, tiger face at least in focus right wow this i called like lockdown period <laughs> our lockdown period is some 50 odd days this is only couple of minutes so intimate shot this is one of my like i am doing lot of work on on close ups also because there are lot of texture we miss out on uh, elephants you know lot of things for example this one is very favorite uh, this is a favorite composition of mine they are all straight their back and this little one is actually going opposite way that is what the little ones do what the parents want to do they don't want to they do they want to go opposite but parents are so uh, what you call uh, the protective that they then they don't let the kids go here and there but here their parents are going on the uh, uh, left and he wants to go on the right and the textures of course right wow wow this is again like uh, uh, what do you call they uh, the tigers they eat uh, i didn't know that they eat can a bees you know i have seen elephants eating it i i have seen monkeys doing that i have seen wild boars doing it but uh, this is the first time i saw it i experienced it i captured it also this is again like uh, i like because of uh, the the how they are playing this is again this for surely i don't say is a great composition or anything it's basically because you don't see them together you heard of elephant who are calm the tiger is sitting there calm and you know uh, elephant are passing by this is again composition uh, i like like the composition yeah. and uh, I, was, i was following these two birds for a long time and then finally i got a shot which which i am quite uh, uh, quite i quite like actually this one also by the way color looks very nice this is again one of my favorite because it shows all the colors of the jungle the dry leaves the fresh leaves the you know uh, deep green light green sap green uh, leaf green yellows and oranges and everything you can see in black and white that bird makes this photograph even that much more It's so beautiful on its own as a family of elephants, but that bird, you know, yeah, it's almost yeah. like it's actually conversing yeah. with them. Yeah, as if the bird is talking to them or singing. Yeah, it's like there's a conversation. <laughs> yeah. If you look at the, you know, it's the expression on the uh, faces of the elephants. It's like they're concentrating on something they're being told by the bird. Yeah. What happened here was like because of our jeep, they came very close and then stood because we are very close. Suddenly this. this bird came this bulbul came and sat and within a second flew away so yeah. again it looks like they are all listening to him but they they give a damn about this bulbul uh, that this bird actually as if as if as if the uh, elephant parent elephants are introducing their kid to the bird yeah exactly exactly so this is again a decisive moment you know yeah yeah, yeah. amazing that's the last one akash yeah yeah good but i'm i, I want to warn you during corona virus time don't do this don't practice this ever huh? <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for this. Uh, yeah. So, um, what do we say, sir? Um, I know. It's like, uh, you know, each image is, you know, uh, what I'd like to talk about, I think, is, uh, you know, the way you deal with your images, Akash, you know, and this is mostly, uh, you know, it's a lot more for young photographers. You know, typically, uh, it's, it's not a question, but it's just a thought looking at your work, is that uh, typically when we look at wildlife photography, uh, there's very little wildlife photography which actually can be recalled in our heads because the images are, you know, there are super pictures out there, some brilliant photographers worldwide in the most amazing places and all that. But, you know, trying to say a story uh, in wildlife is a, is, a, is a very different space, you know, which is what you work on, where you're trying to create these layers and which brings me to, you know, I think uh, the nation that we have been talking about it, you know, that how photography's biggest drawback is that, you know, it might be a superb picture, but, you know, it starts becoming like a poster. And the reason why, uh, you know, good photography, you may think, doesn't really last for a long time because, uh, you know, it just becomes one strong image. So like your image of that very tight portrait of the tiger, uh, it's a beautiful picture, but the problem, and there's a lot of texture, you can read a lot of stuff in there and all that. But what happens with that image like that is that you will look at it and then it's just like after point your boat. And that's the reason why painting works really well, because painting is about something which you keep going back. And I don't mean the good or bad painting, but there's so much more to see the layers and layers. So that tiger picture of yours, which was a portrait and what you were comparing with the earlier image, you know, where it is this vast canvas and there's so much to see in there. There's so much to read that I would prefer an image like that, which I can keep looking at it again and again, even if it's the biggest poster on my, you know, uh, office or home or whatever. So I think, you know, that, I mean, it's such a beautiful way how you tell stories rather than, you know, just doing pictures, not just in art space or wildlife space, you know? So uh, I don't know, Dinesh, you have anything to add? No, no, absolutely, you know, I'm, I'm recalling all the larger, uh, and uh, if I may use the painting analogy again, the larger canvas photographs, is, you know, I can get a sense of Akash sitting there patiently, watching, anticipating, willing things to happen. And that photograph, even in that final moment, I can feel that surge. So that, you know, I'm looking at the trees, I'm looking at the undergrowth, I'm looking at the hill in the background, I'm looking at the clouds. And then suddenly I find that little tiger on the left-hand side, bottom part of the picture, and that search falls in place. You know, it's just that entire, it's just, you know, it's almost like a journey within that still moment uh, around that entire canvas gives me a sense of, you know, sharing that entire experience which Akash has gone through, uh, you know, rather than that one split second, which is the culmination. So there's no culmination there. There's a before, there's an after, there's a in between, there's still there within that, there's, you know, the looking and wondering and, it's, it's, that's what's so beautiful about it. And I think that's the point I wanted to make right in the beginning about Akash being an artist and being able to tell, you know, layered stories, you know, rather than providing information. There's no information. I mean, he does informational photographs. So obviously if he's gone to a certain place, like any good photographer, you want to, and he says it very well when he says he's very hungry, that you want to photograph everything. But then out of those photographs, which is your raw material, then you select things which really are close to your heart, mm -hmm. uh, which is the way you see the world, or you see your favorite subject and how you engage with it. And he obviously is photo pulling out photographs which in a way immortalize his searching for wildlife, you know, and within a landscape which he feels like it's his home. And that's what he's communicating with his photographs really. You know, that's, that's the sense I'm getting. And that's what makes it so special and makes it so different. Right. Absolutely, sir. Yeah. Um, I would have a certain questions. Can I? Can I go ahead? Yeah. yeah. Um, sir, uh, now a visual treat. I think I wish it could just go on and on and on. And uh, um, I've seen a lot of wildlife photographers uh, do wildlife photography, and not to take anything away from them, they. Done some fabulous work. Now, uh, uh, what do you think that your background as an uh, into the advertising world uh, uh, had something to do 
uh, with your compositions that you are getting here in wildlife that you could see and visualize, which others are struggling to. Um, not that the scene is not visible uh, right there in front of them. It is there, but they are not able to see that. They are not able to comprehend how to really compose the wild scene. Is it to, something to do with your um, stint with the advertising? Well, actually, you know, uh, uh, not everybody who is in advertising can become a photographer. Okay. That, that taken, yeah. yeah. So, as I say, you have to practice the, uh, uh, what you call the art of it. As I said, you have to understand that one side of your brain works well. You have to understand that at an early age, that this side of your brain is working fine. So utilize it. Now, the thing is, uh, I have worked very hard by doing compositions. For example, uh, you have today I saw you have uh, put it on the on, on, on Insta and uh, Facebook one picture of mine which is like a girl kicking uh, the sand. Okay, right. now right. this actually uh, incredible India assigned me that they assigned me this project. There are a couple of shots. One of them they told me that they wanted uh, a gypsy who comes from say uh, say uh, Germany or somewhere else. They come and they stay in India. And in Rajasthan, they stay for, for, they come for four, five days or a week, and then they stay for three months. So they, they wanted that kind of a picture because they were going to advertise it in, in, in Europe. So they said, we want a sand dune. And I was looking for sand dune that particular point of time. I didn't have much choice. So I went, drove to, uh, hired a car and went to, uh, what you call, uh, uh, forgetting the name of that place. Uh, where I went to a sand, I found a sand dune and took this uh, German model over there. And I said, look, this sand dune, good sand and the sunset, let's make some good pictures here. And then finally, I said, do something, get some movement to kick. Now, what I'm getting at is, I could have gone to straight away to Jaisalmer and taken some sand dune picture. I could have taken some typical picture. There were four, five, ten camels going, but there is silhouette or there's a shadow falling of the camel. But I've seen, I've seen those pictures many times, you know? So I, I, what I did was I took this gypsy kind of a look and I, I created this picture. So, you know, there is an environment in the whole picture. So I work very hard. I work in my mind that what kind of picture I should do. For example, if I, when I go to the jungle or if I go to, I'm, I'm doing a couple of working on a couple of books. So I have to do a lot of uh, what you call uh, what you call that uh, you know spontaneous photography. Okay, nothing strange. You go there, you see something is happening, and you just capture that. Okay, suppose it's a village life. So I'm capturing them. I'm not directing anyone. So first I will visualize that what kind of picture do I want. Suppose my mind is blank. I click a couple of pictures. I say I no 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 no. This is not what I want then it gives me a guidance. Okay, if you don't want this, then you try this. So then I come to a conclusion, well, this is the kind of a picture if I do, I can make a series in this genre, you know? So you have to work very hard. Your left side of the brain has to work very hard to actually get the sense of the composition rather than what exposure, you know? Exposure, as I said, is secondary will come on its own because you have to, you can't take a blur picture. So you will know automatically how to focus the camera. So don't devote too much of time in focusing the camera. Put some time, see good composition. Why do you see even now there are good books are coming out. I recently bought one. You know, so you see good books, you see good movies. Nowadays you see Netflix, amazing kind of frames you see each other, even if it is a crap movie, I don't like, you know, but I see the frames over there. So I get kind of a sense. If I have to shoot, you know, human being like this, if I have to go to the street, I can sh shoot street like this. It gives me a lot of ideas, you know, inspiration, inspiration for, from things happening around you. You are talking to your, you are you know, in, connected with great photographers. Two of them are sitting here. You are also there. You take inspiration to what kind of composition they make and what should I do? So you take inspiration from everywhere and then make your own inspiration. You have to like what you're doing, you know, at the end of the day. So composition on its own, it doesn't come. Whether you have an art background or not, I've seen so many people in Bollywood, they are, they are 
brilliant musicians, one or two of them, my friends, they are, they are from servicing or they are from client, uh, what you call, they are from engineering background, you know? So uh, they don't have any background of art. So they cultivated it. You know, they are good at science, but then they cultivated the art portion and they have mastered it. That's wonderfully explained, sir, wonderfully explained. Uh, there is another part to it. Uh, you were into advertising and fashion. Uh, did you have the love for wildlife before that? Or it you got into that uh, sometime in the middle, if you can share in brief something something about it? Because See, well, I always uh, liked animals, but not as a photographer. I used to, when I was in college, we had uh, one year course, uh, sorry, we had to uh, present some uh, 30, 35 sketches every day. So what I used to do, I used to go to the uh, zoo very often and I used to shoot everything from hornbill to deer to... It, it, so, it so happened that I was in my college, I, used to, I was called that the fastest, uh, you know, uh, uh, I could draw a monkey fastest because nobody could complete a monkey. Because monkey is moving every millionth of a second because they don't sit in one place. But I used to complete in one go, you know. I used to start from the tail and finish at the head, you know. So I, have, uh, I used to do sketching. So I used to shoot birds. I mean, sketch birds and all that. So obviously I had some kind of a knack, but then after that, I after I passed out from my college, four years I spent in my in, in Himalayas. And Himalayas means I was not doing any other thing, but I actually uh, um, joined the, you know, uh, I had only one dhoti and one line cloth and, and I just moved around without any money. I, uh, I stayed in the jungle. So there I saw birds, there I saw so many things. Uh, where I was staying in one of the one, one of the caves, there were there was a leopard around actually, you know. So, but I was not scared because I had already thrown away my my fear. And then, when I came back, I started slowly developing a kind of a uh, nag because I was doing a book on uh, on uh, Uttar Pradesh. That time it was called Uttar Pradesh, Hundred Wonders of Uttar Pradesh. So, so I had to go to the a friend of mine took me to uh, the jungle. I saw, I liked it, but I never thought I'll become a wildlife. I'll, I'll devote so much of time in it. But as and when I kept on going back and back and you know, this thing, so I started developing a kind of a, I thought I've got a, a natural, uh, uh, you know, connect with the, with the, uh, with the animals. Whether well, it's even at the dogs, I've got a natural connect with the animals, you know. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you for that. Um... Uh, another, uh, there, there are a few questions um, on the YouTube. Yeah. Uh, one is uh, one is by Nishant Rode and yeah. saying that uh, how do you approach a new location that you haven't shot at before, or do you spend time scouting before shooting? Well, actually, as I would always say, time is always very valuable. So, for example, uh, so uh, if I say go to uh, say Nigeria, or I go to Tanzania, okay, Gorongoro. So first, uh, I will keep, suppose I have gone there for five days or I've gone there seven days. So at least one day or two days, I will spend only roaming around and feel the uh, nerve of that jungle. You know, everything has got a nerve. So you have any new jungle or if I go to say uh, Bandavgad or if I go to Kana and I've not gone there for two years. So if I go again, I'll keep one day to see the nerve center of that particular place. And I will sense, I will ask people, I'll do a lot of my inquiries over there. Before going, I'll read. And then after getting there, I'll ask the you know forest guides that uh, what is happening all around? What is What are the possibilities? And I discuss my ideas with them. Then I arrive that, okay, to get the best uh, out of my that limited time, this is the way I'm going to spend. So obviously the Reiki happens. But having said that, during the recce also, I have always found myself start shooting. And I've got a lot of pictures at the time of the recce itself, you know. So as per when I keep one or two days or three days for recce, I do a lot of shoots also during that time. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, another question is by Mayang God. Yeah. Is, do you think experience enhances intuition? And in turn, intuition enhances a wild photographer's luck. 
uh, well, uh, this is a very deep question he's asking. Yeah. You might be a philosopher. And uh, <laughs> yeah, literally, it's a, you see, the thing is, as they say, when you start thinking about something, you meditate on something, you achieve it, right? Because you are concentrating on it. So obviously, you're, it is guiding your positivity into doing that. So yes, of course, if uh, experience enhances your intuition, and then vice versa, that intuition actually, because you know where to put your intuition, and then you work upon it. And then perhaps because you are thinking about it, uh, you you try to uh, those those positivity attracts you, you know. It's it's like a it's like a chumbak. It's like uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. So it attracts you basically. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to ask one and one question. Similar question has come on uh, YouTube as well. Shivam Tandan. Uh, most of the images that we've seen and uh, that you've shown here and otherwise also, you tend to gravitate more towards black and white. Um, any particular reason for that? See, as, uh, the thing is very simple. I have a lot of pictures I've shown you, like, like the black and white first picture, if you remember, that shaft of light. Now that has become, uh, you know, iconic picture or whatever, uh, uh, black and white. But the color one, just to, just to show that, the difference between uh, the color and black and white. Color is, you are looking at that, oh, nice, warm light. You're not looking at the philosophy of the photograph. Okay, so black and white, like I've showed you a lot of trees, this small tiger on the left, and the trees, the kind of branches out, those are the nerves of the jungle. So you can see the nerves of the jungle. If I show you that same picture in color, you will start thinking about, oh, another jungle, okay, nice trees, nice tall trees, nice branches, but then you, it will not take you deep into the photograph. So I feel, Black and white always creates a mystery. In my photographs, I don't know about others, in my photographs, it creates a mystery. And that is what I actually tend to uh, uh, master. That's, that's wonderful, sir. Um, uh, you've not shared it today, but I was going through your, um, I've been following your work, but there's, there's few images that you uh, post on Facebook. Yeah. Um, comparison between what you saw in wildlife. So there's a tiger, there's a light coming from direction, direction light. Then yeah. there's another image of the model in a similar location with the yeah. similar kind of light falling on that. So Dinesh uh, has the PDF, of course, but we don't have the time. Dinesh has all the PDFs. Okay, okay. So that, but uh, can you throw some light on that? Uh, that will that will be great. See, that light is God is throwing that light. I'm only capturing. Okay, now. Uh, if those pictures, uh, if you have two minutes, then uh, Dinesh, is it possible to put that on? It's called two tigress. Now, uh, okay, I'll, I'll explain actually what happens that uh, uh, there is nothing uh, meditative in it. So uh, there is nothing, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, I have concentrated on it. Now you scroll it down. Actually, there are two pictures together. It is showing only one. If you scroll it down, you'll find the next picture. Yeah. 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 Now, what happened was this very funny situation. I had shot that tiger, and uh, this is uh, no, it is previous one actually. So uh, this one was shot. Uh, the one you sh saw with the woman uh, with the shaft of light, this uh, uh, hotel owner, the resort owner, asked me, not this one, a uh, previous one actually. Anyways, if you remember that shaft you of light. You want to see this like this? Uh, uh, yeah, this is better actually. Can you go to the first slide then? Yeah, if you make it smaller, it will uh, before this. Yeah, That's the first one. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. What happened was when I was shooting this particular resort, a beautiful resort actually. Okay, and, and outside the resort is Sal Forest. So uh, the guy, the friend of mine, who is the owner, he said, Akash, uh, I've seen your that marvelous tiger shot. Can you do uh, one shot like that? So I, I thought, I said, how is it possible? This is a woman and that's a, that, that's a totally natural light. 
and how can I create that light? But as luck would have it, what I did was uh, I got some, uh, you know, uh, low bond, and I asked the, I kept the, uh, placed the low bond behind this model. Okay. And then I threw a light on the low bond. And there's, as luck would have it, there's a little bit of shaft of light. I placed the model such a way that from one uh, portion, the sun was visible. And this, he, he uh, put the low bond on, very little low bond, and then the light flashed and th with the sun. It, it looked like a very natural picture, but it is totally created. The lighting, I want to, I want to replicate that lighting. Then I figured out how to do it, and I did it this way. All but right. most of the other pictures are natural. This is the one, only one which is artificially I lit up. See, whenever there's shaft of light uh, and a low one uh, or, or the dust that captures the light. Achha, next one. Yeah, the, this one is ray of light on the left hand side. The other one also ray of light. So I later on I, when I sat together and I say, like, let me find out what are the similarities. So many people ask me this question. So this is nothing uh, engineered, or this is nothing. This is uh, automatically has happened. Uh, this uh, this splash of a woman. I shot this in Goa, and much later I shot the tiger splash. I call it two tigress. That is also tigress. This is also tigress. You know. Fantastic, sir. Fantastic. And how you are comparing them and and now, everything. The, the left one. Sorry. The left one, actually, you see the shape of the woman. Yeah. Uh, the top is the shape of the grass, uh, shape of the tiger. Okay, tiger. the woman like tiger, tigress. Now, here you see that, uh, you know, uh, there's a big locust uh, is being, uh, this thing and the wings are opening. Similarly, it looks like I have taken inspiration from nature and I have done the same thing on a boat in Manipur for a fashion photography. It's amazing. It's amazing how you are drawing parallels and how you are. So um, people like us are trying to seek inspiration of how you are trying to draw parallels between the two, both very, very different genres. Uh, but but uh, you have done a fabulous thing by comparing it and then trying to draw parallels here. On the left, you see that I was talking about sand dune and one uh, below this, is the is is taken much later in 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 the jungle you know so i then i found out both the sunset both colors are similar and one is actually a lady kicking and one is uh, the elephant kicking the you know tail so see, that is how i found the similarity over if you see you will ask me what is the similarity he is uh, over here one is the teak forest but in the center of the teak forest if you see it's kind of a dome is becoming. And yeah. you see the picture on the bottom where there is, is splitting a dome. And in the, in, in this is uh, shot in, in uh, the, the model one is shot in, uh, in uh, Missouri. Uh, and if you see the pillars of that uh, old house, the pillars and the pillars of the teak forest, that, that is how I'm drawing the similarity. And the tigress up there and tigress uh, as a model, you know, that is how I'm drawing the parallel. So should we say that that because you have done so much of photography and and in each field, what your your commercial field of being an advertising and fashion photographer and wildlife as well, uh, your mind works in a similar fashion. You get to see things in a similar fashion, and you create images. Well, actually, I don't know, but uh, I've got one thing very clear in my mind from the very beginning that whether it is. Uh, fashion or people or, or uh, animals, I generally tend to leave a lot of space. I like, you know, like a, like a cinema autographer, I like a 70 mm screen, let me tell you, you know. So I, if I, uh, I see things like that as, as, a, as a movie, you know. So yeah. I tend to give a lot of value to the environment. Now over here, the top one is taken on 22nd floor in Noida. There's a Havis contractor has made this, uh, you know, uh, seamless pool. But uh, I didn't have the tiger uh, or tigress in mind when I shot that. So uh, when I shot the tigress, I didn't have this in mind because 
I am concentrating on one job, but both similarly in both are I am leaving a lot of space. I am not going close, you know. Yeah. So that itself gives me a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, playground to play with my visuals. Amazing. And as Mayank would have said, you know, like with a lot of uh, intuition and all that, maybe they are playing up in my mind, but but not cons consciously, maybe some consciously. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. I have, I have asked my questions to anybody here, please. Summer, sir. Summer, you want to wrap up? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're very much there, visible and audible. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. You know, uh, Akash, I think we need to have a, uh, another session with you on your fashion photography because, you know, each whatever uh, thing, like, you know, you, you brought wildlife here and, you know, there's an entire different dimension of how you actually do wildlife photography. And I think it's the same thing applies for so many different things you have been doing for last 35 years at least. So, uh, you know, I'd love to see maybe hopefully we'll have one more session of your other end, you know. Yeah. Well, I think I would like to, I would, I wanted to ask you the, here only that if you have still some, some um, spare days to, uh, some couple of hours to spare, sure. maybe very soon I'll be get, getting in touch with you and maybe fixing another thing, another uh, such session very soon. And uh, we will have the other side of your photography journey as well. You, if you ask such great people, you know, on the panel and all that, so, uh, it's been brilliant. I think, actually, you know? Yeah. No, no, you, you really, you, uh, like I keep saying this to, uh, you know, what I just spoke earlier, that you make wildlife photography. I mean, you know, you have such brilliant pictures out there, but there are very few which stick in your head. And when you look at your work, you know, there are so many stories there, you know, and that's not easy because wildlife is a very obvious stereotyping. You know, you have in your head that, okay, there's an animal, right kind of light, right kind of background. Uh, and you know, right kind of angle, and hopefully you're close enough, and and hopefully you'll actually get to see the animal to begin with. You know, I mean that's the real battle when you go for wildlife pictures. And uh, but you know, you just create layers of uh, storytelling, and I, you know, that's just so amazing. Each picture, I mean, if you ask me, I can recall every image because it's all sitting in my head. Because you know, usually I'm here, one has seen enough of tigers and birds and whatever it is. But uh, I, I, th I think that's just. Uh, Amazing. I mean, congratulations and thanks so much for sharing this because I think it just it doesn't just inspire young photographers, but I think you can apply this thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's not about wildlife photography, but it's so much to do with that, how you look at, you know, which you keep saying all the time, you know, otherwise you can get great gear and you can be in a great place and great luck and great everything, but you can apply this thought process, how you approach your photographs, how you research it. And also, uh, it was good to hear that, you know, uh, I didn't know that with Bikash, you almost got caught up in an elephant uh, charge there. That, that's quite scary, actually. <laughs> yeah. And many times it happened. The other thing yeah. is actually, you know, uh, a little while ago, I think, uh, what do you call, Jesse asked me uh, about this question that when, uh, whether whatever I'm doing, you know, first thing is, uh, I, uh, I'm slightly that way. Inwardly, I'm rebellious. For example, uh, suppose whatever I see and all that, I go to a place and I see, well, well, somebody has, great photographer has done this kind of work. Let me do it. That doesn't happen to me. Because first thing I say, I negate. I negate that. I said, I should not do anything even the greatest photographer, photography I have seen. I should do my photograph, which might be very bad, but it'll be different from others, you know. Right. At least but people say, yours. what a shit photograph, you know. If they can't say what a great photograph, let them say what a shit photograph. They should not say, I have taken inspiration from someone else. So my endeavor is always like that, that how I, I don't want to do mundane things. This, even in college and schools also, I, you know, first, if you have two minutes more, I'll okay. tell you, like, my my first year in college, they, they gave me one year, uh, it was five years degree course, Bachelor of Fine Arts. So they said one year you have to do photography. So they, uh, they used to share, uh, you know, uh, 
what you call Yashika 635, the twin lens camera, okay. So you had to go, you had been given that, you had to hire, book it, so one day you'll be given in a month and you have to go out and take pictures. So the, uh, the teacher said, uh, that the professor said, the subject is, two, three subjects he gave, one of the most cow, you know. So uh, while seeing that, and in, in that week, there were about 15 students. So everybody had enrolled and they were borrowing the camera every day. Only two of us had their own camera. I didn't have any camera. So uh, I saw everybody is going onto the street and cows everywhere. Somebody is lying on the ground. Somebody is this <laughs> angle, that angle. They are taking cows, you know. Yes. I said, this teacher is making cow out of me. You know, I got really frustrated. <laughs> so when final day came, I took that camera. I went uh, to, uh, you know, uh, Chandni Chowk. Okay. So I saw in early in the morning, I went there, the twin lens camera and all that. I actually lied down on the ground. There's a, in the middle of the uh, road, there's a cow dung, actually, you know. I focused on the cow dung and then I saw a far away, a small uh, cow. So at that time, I didn't know it will become out of focus and all that, which I later on found out, but it became out of focus. So I shot a cow dung picture and a hazy cow somewhere in the background. Then another shot, same cow, I went, ran, and I found that cow, as luck would have it, in front of a, here desi gai ka ghee milta hai. You know, desi ghee ka dukan. I shot a little bit of uh, the, you know, uh, face of that cow and the full shop. Shop was closed, shuttered down, cow and all that. So I put these pictures to, uh, you know, uh, for this sub submission. Now, when the uh, time came like for uh, marking and all that, they are all the shot, my cow shit and everything, everything was like, uh, people are laughing at it, what have you done and all that. The teacher called me and he said that you are kar rahe ho aap. He used to call me, I don't know why he used to call me mama. He said, mama, aap maza kar rahe ho. I bola, kyun kya hua? Ki, maine aapko bola, gai, a maine gai ka, maine shit thori bola. To, maine bola, sir, मैंने <laughs> Or is a guy ka ghi milta hai. It's a brilliant thought. He, he himself told me I never looked at it like that. But you only you are the one who are telling a story, you know. So I am coming from that genre. I didn't want to do what others are doing, no matter how brilliantly I can do it, you know. Right. My endeavor is that, you right. know. Excellent. That's a great anecdote. <laughs> Very inspiring, actually, especially, you know, for young photographers. It's so easy to go fall into that big hole where everybody else has been, you know. Yeah. 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 I think, uh, so we are already <laughs> way, way beyond, but it, it's been a fabulous, uh, fabulous session so far. And, and um, we are, I'm totally floored. I'm totally floored. I was on, my, on the edge of my my chair and I wanted to just jump in and, and be there and probably with the camera and shoot those, uh, try and at least shoot those uh, iconic frames and um, uh, your images look as if, uh, as if you, uh, see everybody comes, comes out with, uh, when, when you click a good image, when you share a good image, I'm sure everybody would have five or six bad images attached to that, which, which never come out of the uh, cupboard. Uh, they they get deleted, they get buried. Uh, but when we see your visual, the, the images that you showed, it looks as if that was the only image that you shot, and uh, that what that's what made it iconic. I think uh, uh, we feel that everything happened at that moment, and you happened to be there, and and you happened to even visualize and compose it beautifully. Um, and and storytelling always enhances it. Yeah. Other thing I generally don't do, uh, which I strongly believe in, I when I'm shooting in any location, okay, whether it is very, very critical, uh, too much of uh, technical problems and all that, whichever way, 
I just take one, look at one or two pictures, click it and take, even without the subject. Suppose I'm envisaging that something might happen in the jungle. I take a background shot and see whether everything is correct or not, okay? After then the subject comes in, I never lose my eye contact with my subject, whether it's model or it is an elephant or it is uh, any other, or it's bird, you know? So at that time I am focused on it. And I don't do like, after clicking some pictures, I don't look down and start deleting because I strongly believe your actually negative side, the negation, process of negation and addition are two different. When you're negating on your, you know, that is why people shoot film and videos and then they bring so much of footage and then they, when they're sitting on the editing table, they're reading. They are not editing on the spot. Why? Because when you are in a spree of in editing mind, when you are in a process of negation, you will negate the worst ones. Whereas at that particular moment of time, you might delete some of your best pictures. A picture where it has become out of focus doesn't mean it's a bad picture. It might have tremendous value. How do you know in a small screen, you can't even see whether it is in focus or not. So I always, I never use, when I'm in a mood of deletion, I put that button on. When I'm in a mood of addition, I only do an add. And that's a wonderful piece of advice, sir. That's Look, if I, you know, I just, I was just thinking of, you know, so what did I think of Akash's work, which of course I've seen so many times and everything, but uh, in a concentrated way with Akash talking about it. Uh, so... I realized when I was looking back at the last two odd hours that uh, I couldn't decide if Akash is a landscape photographer or is he a wildlife photographer. Uh, and the conclusion I seem to come to is that I think he's more a meditative photographer. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's more of a feeling photographer than he, this is my subject only. You're, you're placing subjects and layers and various elements together to create a poem which happens to be in a visual form, you know, so it's just for me as a reader then to be able to decode that and to take that feeling from it. Uh, so I would never now put it into any one box, ki ye wildlife, hai, ki ye, you know, landscape. Hai. It's, it's, uh, it's a photographer who is meditative in nature. And this is how he engages with the subject and an environment which he loves being in. I mean, that's, that's, that's what really came through to me. Akash, thank you so much. It's, it's really been a... One, thing, one more thing, like, I don't know whether you remember or not. When I think 2006 or so, I had done my first exhibition in Habitat Center mm. and the large gallery, and it was all black and white, handmade, large, large prints of elephants yeah, only. Yeah, I yeah, remember it very well. Yeah. I remember and, that. And I asked you to uh, write a note and all that. And you, you wrote, you know, after you went back, and uh, you wrote that uh, it, it all... Akash's meditation shows up all in his pictures. He's, his pictures are as calm as he is, you know? That is the, I, I'll never forget that. <laughs> so Akash, you are consistent and I'm consistent. <laughs> 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 but yeah, that's actually, thank you for bringing that up. But that's exactly what I meant to say. I mean, that's, it's, it's, there's a certain calmness. You know, you have, you have your patience and the point you're making about patience as being different from waiting is what comes true in the photographs that you're sharing lunch, it's, it's, it's And I have always been a great you know, believer in patience and serendipity. I think those are, as far as I'm concerned, those are my goddesses, you know. Yeah, exactly. So. Right, sir, right. It was a great time I had, actually. Uh, thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you so much, Samar and Dinesh. Thank you so much. Yeah, for Pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so thank much you for much. sharing this. Thank Three you. of you, uh, first of all, uh, uh, Akash sir, to, to agree because I just shot a, an arrow in the dark and uh, you responded and, and uh, you accepted and it all started from there and then uh, then um, I'm asking Dinesh sir and Samar sir so both agreeing and we had such, an, such a wonderful session, one of the finest sessions uh, so far on this platform. And I will be con con connecting soon for the part two of this. And this has to come because uh, we have to, we are yet to see your other side of the work as well. And um, I'll connect with you very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir, is there a new cast? 
सर आप कास्ट नहीं है बोल रहे जब मैंने जब मैंने पहला कैमरा उठाया था आप तीनों लोग एक मेरे फादर के एक्सपीरियंस से भी ज्यादा का ओवरऑल फोटोग्राफी में एक्सपीरियंस रहा वो तो मैंने पहले ही एक्सप्लेन कर दिया कि आकाश इज यू नो ही इज 94 इयर्स ओल्ड आई एम 97 बट यू नो टू बैलेंस आस यू नो समर इज 19 एंड दैट्स व्हाई यू गॉट हिम देयर यू नो सो इट्स इट्स या जो पोस्ट देख के लग गया कि ही स्टिल अ टीनेजर है तो सो सर हम तो हमने तो शुरू तक आप लोग उस लेवल पे पहुंच चुके थे सो आई थिंक सर तो छोटा सा रिस्पेक्ट है वो दिल से आई जस्ट वांटेड टू क्लैरिफाई कास्ट तो नहीं है ना कोई मेरे को कास्ट से बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है लेकिन आकाश का प्रॉब्लम है ना कि किसी ने और ने किया वो मेरे को नहीं करना मेरे को किसी कास्ट में नहीं फिट होना है थैंक यू 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 थैंक